Stand by for transmission. Hello everyone and no one at all. It is I, Rainy, and we are coming back into Ad Astra. If my computer wouldn't freeze up. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Damn it. Uh, wouldn't be gaming if we didn't have these technical difficulties, am I correct? Yeah, I'm correct. One second. There we go. Now it's working. Woo! All right. So, where we last left off, we landed on the planet of Ad Astra. And Amicus, well, he essentially took us as prisoner. But we might be uh, experiencing some Stockholm Syndrome here because, um, you know, Amicus be fine, you know? So, without further ado, let's hop in to where we left off. So, this is the question we were previously asked. What is death to you? So the question is, so the answer is, infinity or oblivion? Hmm. It's a hard question. One that makes you kind of think about your own morality. Your own mortality. Death to me is infinity. Very interesting. Sometime, just before I fully wake up, I hear something move around behind me, followed by a mumbled voice, then a soft padding sound that fades out after a few moments. I wonder if one of my flatmates has just arrived, and I look into my and looked into my room for some reason. As I shift around, I frown at the at how weirdly firm the bed I'm laying on is. My bed was softer than this when I got into it. And where are the sheets? I open my eyes and see a velvety red surface in front of me. Then I turn over and see an unfamiliar ceiling with a gold square pattern above me. Oh yeah. I look over toward the bed where I expected to see Amicus, but it's empty. I stare again at the ceiling for a while, letting the sudden realization that I'm still here wash over me. 
I go over everything that happened yesterday. The last shred of hope that I had been dreaming faded from my mind. I look over at Amicus's bed again, wondering if he'd gone into the bathroom. I listen for a while, but I don't hear anything coming from the door across from the bed. There's a muffled sound of what I assume are birds tripping coming from behind the curtain. Slowly I slide off the sofa, feeling the cold marble against my bare feet as I do. I shiver and decide to bring the blanket with me, wrapping it around my shoulders. I shuffle around the sofa and move to the side of the large curtain to pull it back just slightly. The air that comes through is fresh and immediately reminds me of camping by a lake during summer camp. That would make sense because ahead of me is what looks like to be a massive body of water that seems to come up right to the edge of the balcony. It's warm, but not nearly as humid as it was last night. Pink and orange light paints the clouds on the horizon, and for a moment, I take in the sight. The hills and mountains to either side of the lake are covered in lush green trees. So is the little island a ways out to my left. In the distance, on the other side of the lake, is what looks like a city of some kind. It's hard to tell how big it is since it's a good ways away, but from what I can tell, the buildings are massive, and the smaller structures that taper off to the side seem to stretch far beyond them. Dim lights from the windows glitter in the distance, and I wonder if that city is full of wolves like Amicus and Cassius. Despite my situation, I kind of want to go see it. As I watch, I see small, dark oval descend down toward the city, blinking blue and red lights. I have to smile and shake my head a little. I still want to go back to Earth, but this is undeniably amazing. I let the curtain finally shut and turn back to the room. So where did that big wolf go to? Yeah, where did our uh, boyfriend go to? You at least told me before you ran off. Yeah, you know, just like men, they run off after they get some nookie, and it's just, mm. Just, mm. Good morning, Rainy. I jump as the computer crackles. Oh, the computer voice crackles overhead. I clutch my chest, breathing hard as the voice continues. <laughs> Amicus has a message for you. There's a pause, then. Hey, Rainy. I'm going on my morning meditation. It's in a room just down the hall, and I'll be back in approximately an hour. Why don't you take this time to get familiar with the room? There's a pause. Then, are you still recording, Calm? Yes, to end recording, say end of message. Oh, um, see you soon, Rainy. End message. Is it st To end recording, say an end of message. My god's end of message! I hear Amicus starting to curse again before the message cuts off. I look around the room a bit and notice how little there is to get familiar with. I can go through the dresser, but I assume that it's mostly filled with Amicus's things, and I doubt he wants me to get familiar with those. I don't know, you might. <laughs> I move across the room toward the bathroom door, standing in front of it for a moment before staying the black panel in the middle of it. It's similar to what Amicus used to open the door in the hallway. I reach out and try to push it, and the moment my finger brushes against the surface, it's sl the door slides to the side so fast that I jump. Great sound effects. <laughs> the lights come on, inside come on, slowly illuminating the interior. Oh, this is a nice damn bathroom. This is nicer than mine. I poke my head inside, then quickly step in, imagining the sliding door suddenly closing and chopping my head off. It stays open until I'm halfway in the bathroom, then it closes automatically. <laughs> There's a large sink to my left, 
and an even larger mirror above it. In the corner, there's a marble-looking bench with a hole that I can only assume is a toilet. Finally, across from that is a large bath and what I imagine to be the shower. I really need to pee, so I head over to the bench and do my business down the hole, hoping that it's not something like a laundry chute and I'm pissing on the servants below. <laughs> Oh my god, I just had that image pop into my head. Just be like, oh man, I really gotta pee. I really, really need to pee. And then... Wait, wait, wait what is that? Oh my god, someone's peeing! <laughs> as soon as I start, though, water begins to pour down the sides of the tube, leaving me pretty sure that it is indeed a toilet. I guess I should be more confident in assuming things about this place. Everything is fairly similar to what I had on Earth. I walk over to the sink and push at the faucet, then stick my hand under it, and water starts pouring out. I'm tempted to take a drink, but then I notice the water is bubbly and soapy looking. Having nothing left to do in the bathroom, I turn back to the door and find the black square again. Reach for it, and just like before, the door slides open. If he thinks he's going to get away with it, Cassius is facing away from me, his arms folded and his bushy white tail switching from side to side. I freeze up, staring at him wide-eyed. I have plenty of time to jump to the side, maybe hide in the shower area, but I just stand there like an idiot as the wolf turns around almost in slow motion. He freezes just like I did when he spots me standing in the doorway. We stare at each other for a moment. A very long moment. Then he screeches, making me jump back in shock. Yeah! Oh God, Zenibo, what is it? The wolf dodges back and forth, expecting me to try to run at him. Kato, Kato, help! Please, come quick! Finally, Cassius' little dance of terror ends with him sprinting to my left and up the room. I stand there for a moment, listening to his screams fade down the echoing hallway, while wondering if I should hide or something. Maybe go back into the bathroom and try to lock it. Instead, I hear more thudding. Someone running up from the hallway from the other end. Then Amicus comes running into the room, sliding to a stop in the middle of it. He spins in a circle that spots me and runs up to me. What happened? Uh, Cassius came in and saw me. You let him see you? But No, he just came in and... Where were you? Meditating. I left a message. Where did he go? Cassius, he, 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 he just ran off. Damn it. Amicus stands there, his tail thrashing back and forth. I glare at him. If you hadn't just left me here, this wouldn't have happened. Cassius shouldn't have even come in here. Amicus turns away and starts pacing back and forth. What are you doing? Shh, thinking. I bristle a little bit at being shushed, but I stay quiet, watching the wolf stalk back and forth. Then I hear voices again. Cassius, along with another deep voice. Amicus turns to me. Just be quiet for a moment as I try to explain things, understand? I glare at Amicus. His ears flatten and his expression becomes a bit more desperate. Please? I still don't say anything, but I give him a curt nod. He reaches out to my shoulder, then pauses, and instead offers me his paw to me. I take it, and he gently pulls me from the bathroom to stand next to him in the middle of the room, facing the open doorway to the hall. Oh, shit. Amicus fixes a confident smile on his face, though I can feel how tense he is next to me. From around the corner comes Cassius, but he's hiding behind someone else. Another wolf. Woof! Oh, this must be Daddy. They both stop in the doorway as the larger wolf takes both Amicus and I. Amicus, what are you doing with it? Step away! Amicus gently places a paw around my shoulder, drawing me in against his bulk. Yo, I would like that. Cassius's eyes widen, though the wolf next to him seems to have no reaction. 
Then again, that could just be because I can't see his eyes. What are you doing, Amicus? Amicus clears his throat. <clears throat> Cassius, Cato, he nods to each of them in turn. This is my pet, Rainy. Cassius' mouth falls open. The other wolf, Cato, seems to shift a bit at that. Silence drags out. Then Cato shifts again. Is this where you've been the past two days, Amicus? Amicus' arms tighten a bit around my shoulders, drawing me in closer. Yes. And that's where you took your father's ship. Slight pause. Y yes. Cassius gasps. <gasps> he can't do that! He glances at Kato. Can he? The bigger wolf is quiet, and even though I can't see his eyes, I get the feeling that he's watching me closely. Cassius turns his glare back on Amicus. Where did it come from? Excuse me, I don't like being prefer- I prefer not to be called an it. Thank you, bitch. Amicus rubs my arm. He came from far away. Is he a child? Is he a child? Yes. But he can't just take someone else's child, can he? Again, Cassius looks at Cato. Once again, Cato is quiet. Then he finally sighs. <sighs> we will discuss this over breakfast, Amicus. Get dressed and bring the creature with you. As long as he's safe? Of course. Then we will continue the conversation there. With that, Cato turns on his heels and walks out of the room, leaving Cassius to look after him with a gaping mouth. He turns back on us, snarling. I don't know what you're planning with that thing, Amicus, but if I know you, it's going to be incredibly stupid. He takes another second to look at me with unmistakable disgust. Bitch, I'll beat your ass. You could have at least obtained me one that isn't quite so ugly, you know. You know, leave, Cassius. And don't think about snooping around my room again, understand? Cassius doesn't respond and simply walks away, looking over his shoulder just before he leaves. And expect to receive punishment from Cato for stealing father's ship. Absolutely outrageous. I watch Cassius' tail swish out of sight and behind the doorway. Amicus lets out a huge sigh and I feel his chest deflate against my shoulder. <sighs> Damn it. I sigh as well. You really didn't think all of this through, did you? I slowly move out from under the wolf's heavy arm. No, 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 stay under that heavy arm. I wanna, I wanna be in his arms. Like I said, I made many mistakes. I'm just tired of lying now. You still told them I'm a child. Amicus brings a paw abruptly to his mouth, touching the pads of his fingers to his lips. It might not be a shushing gesture, but I'm familiar with it, but I know what it means. Amicus listens, his ears straighten up, and eyes looking up at the ceiling. Finally, he looks back to me, whispering. That is... That is something I can never tell them the truth about. And it would be best if you never mention it again. Please. His suddenly serious demeanor cools my mood a little bit. So I just sigh again and sit on the edge of his bed. Amicus stands there awkwardly for a moment, then quickly moves over to the open door, placing a paw on the square to close it. He moves back over to me. His voice still lowered. Well, if you're going to pass off as a pet, then I should probably get you familiar with your duties. My duties? I raise an eyebrow at Amicus. <sighs> I understand your frustration, but we need to do this right if we want things to go as smoothly as possible. You don't have to do anything, but it will help you blend in better. I roll my eyes, lean back on my hands. 
looking up an amicus. All right, what do I do? Well, first of all, I take my shower and you help me wash. Oh, I get to touch the big wolf. <laughs> Absolutely, I would help him. Help you wash? Yes, you would soak my fur and such. We stare at each other for a moment. Um, it's something that others wouldn't see, so I suppose it's not necessary. Unless you want to. Oh, I want to. I really, really want to. <laughs> no. Come on, me. Shut up. No. Well, all right then. Never mind on that one. Oh, he looks so disappointed. Come on. Come on, me. You, you, could, you could... Come on, feel all that muscle, baby. He's clearly offended. <laughs> he looks offended. He was like... Like, how dare you? <laughs> Listen, I'm not gonna soap up your naked body. I would. Yeah, you made that clear. Anyway, I rather honestly skip the shower today, but spending all of that time in the spaceship has left me rather uh, unkempt. Turns to the bathroom and opens the door. You should at least come into the bathroom while I shower in case Cassius decides to barge in again. You can stare at the wall or something. He stalks into the bathroom and I have to smile as I follow him in closing the door quietly behind me. He notices me smirking. What? I shrug. Nothing. Just kind of funny that you got so huffy. I don't know what that means. He adjusts his underwear, then suddenly drops it, and I quickly look away. I suppose your people prefer modesty? Out of the corner of my eye, I can tell that Amicus has a smirk on of his own. Around others, at least, and you guys just don't walk around naked, so don't you prefer modesty, too? It all depends on the time and place. Seriously, we need to have that here in the States. Amicus moves into the shower, and for the next ten minutes or so, I sit on the counter while the room fills with steam. Once the shower shuts off, a loud fan starts up, and I glance over to see Amicus with his arms out, and his fur blowing back and forth. He notices me look over, then look away again. You know, he has to, he has to almost shout over the fan. You could have cleaned up too if you showered with me, but you won't have time with breakfast coming up. You'll have to do it after. I shrug and wait for Amicus to step out and grab clean undergarments hanging from the hook which he spent since the next minute tying on. All right, balls are gone. You can look now. <laughs> oh, we don't get to see his fur balls. <laughs> Actually, do you even have those? I don't want to assume. Uh, I'm not dropping trowel and showing it. Well, I would drop trowel and show him, but... Uh, <laughs> I open the door and head back out. Guess you'll never know. Oh, that was flirty. <laughs> Amicus spends another minute in the bathroom, opening a door under the sink and rifling around in it. The next thing you're supposed to do is get the brush and oils from here. He lifts up a brush and a few glass bottles with colorful liquids inside before coming over to stand in front of me. <sighs> I know you don't want to do it, and I realize now that I'm repulsive to you, but I really can't reach every part of my coat, and it would be strange if I called for a drone when I have a pet. I think ab about making another moody remark, but the expression on his face makes me pause. I suppose I am being a little bratty right now. So as well, so I'm going to do while I'm here. So on the sofa all day, I get up, take the brush from Amicus, and I see a surprised smile on his face. Thank you, Rainy. Shows me how to apply one of the liquids, a honey-colored one, to the brush. 
It's a treatment for my fur. Keeps it soft and voluminous looking. Here, you just take the brush and run it with the lay of my fur. He then hands me the brush and then stands facing away. Ooh, excuse me. I start slowly and run the brush through the fur between his ears and down his broad back, watching the slightly disheveled hairs line up and lay down smoothly. It accentuates his shoulder blades and the thick, smooth muscles in its back. I'm hesitant at first, but I become more confident with each stroke. Actually, it's kind of relaxing. That is until I brush down the left side of his neck, which makes him gasp. <gasps> I pull back quickly. Sorry, did I brush too hard? <laughs> no, that's just where you hit me earlier. Oh. I look closer and I see what looks like a lump under the fur. Carefully brush around it and move to Amicus's front. Amicus, meanwhile, has his eyes closed with a smile on his face. Clearly enjoying himself. I'm sorry about that, by the way. I was really scared when I did it. Don't worry about it. I deserved it for tying you up so poorly. Gives me a wink. I feel my face grow a little hot as I focus on getting the fur to lay just right on his biceps. And you know, you're not repulsive to me at all. I was just being a dick earlier. You look... good. Well, I suppose I was too. I shouldn't have made fun of your sensibilities. All aliens have their own cultures, which are different, but that doesn't mean less valuable. Amicus's tone sounds weirdly rehearsed, like he's quoting something. Also, thank you, Rainy. I think you look good too. Ooh. You might be just returning the compliment, but it's nice to hear after what Cassius said. But I definitely wasn't lying. Now that I'm this close to him, I have to admit he's a little handsome. Uh, a little handsome? He's a lot handsome, bitch. I mean, seriously. It, like, If you were to come up to me and offer me a drink, I would gladly accept that drink and ask, what do you want to do with me? <laughs> His face is expressive and kind of charming. There's just a generally a friendly air about him. And well, then there's his body. It's thick and masculine, like a burly human. And I can't deny that it's kind of appealing. Kind of. <clears throat> I start to brush down the wolf's front, feeling his chest and stomach rise against the brush with his breathing. I sculpt the lighter fur around his pecs to accentuate them better since it seems how he was keeping it earlier. Can't blame him. Then I move to his belly, move the brush over its thick and slightly rounded form. Muscles are less defined here, but I can still sense strength underneath it all. Brush the lower part of his midsection, and I notice the crotch of his loincloth bulging out rather far. Oh boy. Alright, thank you, Rennie. That should be good. Oh, I got him horny. <laughs> <laughs> I got him horny, yeah! <laughs> we got him horny, boys! <laughs> he takes the brush away from my hands and turns away, leaving me with the strong suspicion that he's adjusting himself. Though he covers it up by pretending to mess with the, with the other bottom. Fairly turns around, looking flushed. <laughs> um, hold out your paws, please. Is he gonna slab that big piece of meat into my hand? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I stick out my hands and he tips the bottle over, the liquid in this one having a purplish tint to it. Several drops fall into my hand. Immediately my nose is filled with the scent of lavender that I've been smelling off of Amicus since I first met him. Oh god, lavender. Rub them together, and then sort of just pat my body and underarms along my neck as well. You tell Amicus is still flustered, so I do it quickly, not wanting to linger and cause the wolf any other problems. <laughs> Maybe it just feels really good to be rushed like that? Oh, come on, you are dense, dude. <laughs> I 
Is this like perfume? Yes. It keeps the muskier scents hidden from the most part. Muskier scents. Hmm. I see. And I unplugged my headphones. God dang it. I can't hear shit. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, there we go. Do you use perfume? Well, I guess we do wear something like that on my underarms. Feel free to use it then. I decided not to tell them that lavender scents are mostly for women on Earth. Besides, it does smell nice. Once the perfume is done, he moves on to get dressed, showing me how to drape his cape over his shoulders. Alright, so I know you only have the pair of clothes you came with, so I'll have a tailored drone come up later today and see if we can't make you more pairs of what you have. Oh, okay. Now let's head to the dining room before we're late. He pauses, frowning. Now, I know you won't like it, but you're going to have to feign some ignorance in front of the others. Raise an eyebrow. How so? Well, you're going to need to act a bit dumb. The antagonistic feelings that have been fading over the past few minutes start to rise up again. And how do I do that? He shrugs. I don't know, just give him a vacant stares, incoherent mumbles, act like you can't grasp more complex matters. The whole point is to make it seem like you're a typical child. I don't like it, but I don't want to have anything to do with the, those aliens, so if you'll make them leave me alone, all right. Thank you, Rainy. This may not always have to be the case, but for now we need to play on the safe side of things. Just let me do all the talking. You got it. Great. Now let's hurry to the dining room. I don't want to make Kato more angry than he already is. He was angry? And with that, I follow Amicus out into the hallway. So, who's Kato? The wolf you saw with my brother. He was my father's advisor and currently the acting emperor. I mentioned earlier that he'll be choosing between me and my brother. That's why I'm doing my best to keep him in a good mood, or at least not a bad mood. I don't think he has a good one. And keep in mind on to stay on Kato's good side as well. Meanwhile, sunlight pours through the open windows, and I can hear birds calling from outside again. Birds. What was that? I can hear birds. I'm just surprised that they sound the same as they do on Earth. Ah, yes. You wouldn't know this. All life has the same origin and develops in roughly similar way. It's only natural that life here is similar to your moon, uh, planet, I mean. Oh. Well, all life on this side of the universe, at least. There may be another, uh, but we'll have to leave that conversation for later. For now, I follow Amicus around the corner and find myself standing in a large, spacious room. The first thing I notice are the large screens on each wall of the room, displaying colorful images of stars, galaxies, and spaceships. In the middle of the room are what look like beds surrounding a table. In those beds are two are the two wolves I saw earlier. Cato is sitting, leaning over towards Cassius, who is draped luxuriously over one of the beds. Cato is talking to Cassius, while the other wolf has a, his typical sour expression. Sitting on the floor in front of Cassius' bed is a creature that I've never seen before. Oh, it's a Neko! Neko boy! Didn't know he was into cats. Cool. Give me a second, y'all.
Oh, supposedly 84 degrees tomorrow. Yeah, okay, sure. It's definitely not a wolf. More feline-like. Cassius has his paw on his head, mildly scratching while he listens to whatever K.O. is saying. He sees us and abruptly stops sitting up. K.O. stops talking and looks over at us. You're late. And good morning to you, Cass. And to you, Kato. Alexios. Amicus turns to Kato and the small cat creature, bowing to both of them. Good morning. Morning, Amicus. The cat, Alexios, nods to Amicus with a smile. At the same time, I see Cassius tug on the gold collar around his neck. It isn't very much, but Alexios immediately drops the smile from his face, looking down. How many times do I have to tell you not to acknowledge him, Amicus? Amicus seems to ignore Cassius and walks to the empty bed, pulling me along with him. He whispers in my ear, Sit in front of me like Alex is doing. I look over at the cat and see his irks per perk up in our direction, though he continues to avoid looking at us. He's in a kneeling position, so I do the same. I'm starting to feel a little uneasy about this whole setup. Amicus, meanwhile, stretches out across the bed, an elbow in the cushion as he props himself up. Come, send in breakfast. Yes, Kato. A few seconds later, literal flying saucers levitate into the room from beyond another archway. I get a moment to see some sort of black device under on the underside of the plates before they gently come across, come to rest on the table. I blink, but don't say anything deciding to just take everything in without question. I decide to instead to focus on the food. I can at least identify a few of the portions, one of them being what looks like bread. Then there's a plate of odd white crumbly substance next to what is a bowl of what I'm pretty sure are olives. There's a glass bottle filled with some type of red liquid, probably wine. And finally in the middle, next to some towel-like napkins, is roasted poultry, golden-colored and steaming. It actually smells really, really good, and considering what I haven't eaten any real food over in a day, I feel my mouth water. Still, I have enough common sense to know that I probably can't just dig in, so I keep my eye on the cat, waiting to see what he does next. He grabs four small plates from the tall stack and sets them down in front of himself. Then he starts to grab some slices of bread, which he sits down on one of the plates. I look back at Amicus, and he nods. So I do the same, grabbing four plates, setting them out in front of myself on the table, starting to grab the separate portions of food to set them on their own plates. Meanwhile, Cato just leans over to grab his own while Cassius clears his throat. <coughs> so, Amicus. What is this? I look up and immediately find Cassius' eyes boring into mine. I quickly look back down and grab the wood-handled knife that Alexios had just set down, using it to spread the white stuff onto the slices of bread. It's probably butter. I wrinkle my nose at how stinky it is, and I realize it's probably some type of cheese. This is Rainy. He's my pet. No, Amicus, what is is it? It's not one of our children. Does it belong to a sibling? I'm half listening to the conversation while I see Alexios reach out with his bare paws and pull a chunk of meat off the poultry. I hesitate, kind of wishing I had the chance to wash my hands, but do it anyway, wincing at how hot it is. The temptation is so strong to just stuff it in my mouth, but I managed to sit it down on the plate. Finally, I grab a bunch of olives and put them on their own plate. At this point, I can see that Alexios is lining up his plates in front of Cassius on the bed. Carefully, I do the same for Amicus, though I lose an olive in the process. I watch it roll across the ground, but decide to ignore it, and Amicus just pats my head and mutters a thank you. No. He's from a failed uplift. I watch Alexios start to fill... Still... Bleh. Watch Alexios starts filling a goblet with red liquid, but look up when I realize there's complete silence. What the hell? They're launching fireworks outside? Seriously? It's not the 4th of July yet. 
Cassius and Cato are both staring at Amicus. I look back at him, and he seems to look pretty calm, though I can see him picking at his claws. Uh, are you serious? Yes. But why? He's a barbarian! Because I've decided the abandoned children deserve to reestablish regular content. If we are to unite with the Chimerians, sorry, the Chemians, then we also need to unite ourselves. I start filling, I start filling Amicus's goblet as I feel his eyes on me. Child or not, having a pet like this will show the Chemians my intentions. Cassius scoffs slightly, <sighs> popping an olive into his mouth and chewing it vigorously. Masterful stunt, Amicus. But you still stole, f stole father's ship to get there. Using stretch tech without authorization from the Emperor is a violation of the law, is it not, Cato? I hand the goblet to Amicus, silently wondering if the wolf is going to be thrown in jail on my first day here. What would happen to me, then? Probably go to jail, too. Still, Amicus looks calm. And when he sees my eye, wide eyes, he just winks. It could be, but there's no emperor, is there, Cassius? Cato finally lays back, his small plates heaped high with food. He turns his head back to Amicus. Are you saying you piloted the ship to the outer reaches of our empire? Voice commands only work for the emperor. If I'm not mistaken. That is correct. I learned to navigate the ship on my own. I was also able to communicate with their people, negotiate, and sign a, a contract with them. This is where I start to hear Amicus's voice falter. I actually do believe now that he doesn't lie often, but it's clear that he's so bad at it. I copy Alexios and turn, return to my kneeling position next to the bed, then switch to a cross-legged one when my knees get too sore. Cato watches from the bed silently, and I again feel unnerved at the feeling that he might be looking at me. Fascinating. Cassius curls his lips back. Fascinating? He used the stretch drive. He's going to get away with it because father is dead? What does that make all the other laws. Can a beggar now steal from the market because he had, there is no authority to tell him not to? Can a child rebel from the empire because there is no emperor to tell them? Quiet, Cassius. You know the circumstances as well as I do. Cassius snaps his mouth shut with a huff. <clears throat> then turning his attention back to his food, which he starts to pick at. The conversation seems to stop there, and I wonder if Amicus is, is in the clear. While Cassius sure seems indignant, I get the feeling that Amicus wasn't in any danger in the first place. I guess being the Emperor's sons has its perks. Could you get me some more of the Azure, Rainy? I look over at the table for a moment in confusion. Um, what's that? I try to keep my voice low, but that's when Cassius suddenly yowls, clapping a paw to his head. Oh, gods, it doesn't speak the language. I look at Cassius and Amicus in confusion. Of course not. They were abandoned. Most of the abandoned still speak the language. How far away is his home star? Roughly 50,000 light years. I don't care. Don't have it speak again. The last thing I need is a headache from the lingua manually translating everything he says. It's barbaric. Damn, what a bitch. I don't know what he's calling a headache. Calling the headache barbaric or me? Yep, yeah, probably me. Upload its language to the Nexus before you let it out in public again, Amicus. I decide I really don't like it. Cassius. Yeah, I don't like this catty bitch either. Yes, I'm calling him a catty bitch because he is a catty bitch. He's talking about me like I'm just a piece of property. Then I feel Amicus's paw on my shoulder for a moment, giving a soft squeeze before pulling back again. The conversation topic shifts to stuff that I really don't understand. 
mostly politics and Kimians, whatever that is. Despite their fight earlier, Amicus and Cassius are pretty animated in their conversation. Amicus keeps sticking empty plates in my face, indicating that I should refill them. It's clear that I'm not going to be eating while the wolves are, and I feel my irritation grow. I'm not a servant. I didn't agree to this. And even if this is supposed to be help me blend in, I can't help but feel Amicus could have put me in a better position than this. Virginia sent me a letter last night saying that she'd been bringing back a camion tomorrow. He got trapped here after the stretch drive depletion. Oh, he wasn't able to return to the retrieval ship? He was on Ancorus at the time, so it took him several months to get back to Ad Astra. He's going to be our guest until the next ship arrives. I think it will be quite interesting to see one in person. Who can say that they met two siblings? Cassius reached down and started stroking Alexios' head fur. The green and gray cat closes his eyes, smiling and, purling, and purring. I watch this for a moment, then I freeze up as Amicus paw feels Amicus's paw on my head. He starts to gently scratch his blunt claws into my scalp, rubbing my hair around. It actually feels really good, but knowing that he's doing to get me pissed off, but knowing what he's doing gets me pissed off all over again. He already knows I don't want to be doing this. That he brought me here against my own will. Now he's stroking me in public like I'm actually his pet. Ah, uh, well, I guess that makes sense. I guess he's doing his part to help me blend in just like I'm doing mine. But that doesn't mean I don't hate it, but then his other paw sticks an empty goblet down under my nose. More wine, please. I let the goblet hang in the air for a moment and then take it and reach out robotically for the heavy wine bottle getting on my knees to do a better pour into the empty goblet. I fill it up as Amicus continues to stroke me. I'll bet even fewer can say that they met an abandoned species, when you think. Cassius glares at Amicus and I glare at the wine. I try to remind myself that this is just to help me get home. Or maybe he's actually showing me up because he likes how he's getting under Cassius's fur. I turn my knees to face the wolf and hand back his goblet. Noticing how full it is, the wine almost sloshing over the rim. Amicus reaches out for the goblet. My fingers twitch, then I feel the goblet slip out of my hand. Watching it as it seems to fall in slow motion onto its side of the bed. Wine shoots out in a red gush, splatting across Amicus's lighter furred front. Oh! <laughs> the wolf gasps, sitting up suddenly as the wine pours down his chest and stomach and onto his pants. Let me lick it off. What? 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 Ah, oh, damn. Meanwhile, Cassius bursts out, laughing behind me, snorting, obviously. <laughs> Maybe there's a reason so few have ventured out to meet them, Amicus. I see Alex staring at me, but when I meet his, but when I meet eyes with him, he looks down. Amicus reaches over, reaches over me from one of the towels, glancing down at me as he does. Try to keep myself from smirking, but I think I fail. He pauses, staring at me in astonishment, as I guess he realizes that I did it on purpose. He doesn't look angry, though. Instead, he grabs the towel and starts patting down his front, the fur still stained with a dark maroon color. What are you doing, Amicus? Cassius has finished his laughing, and I look over him, seeing, staring at us. What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm cleaning up the mess. Amicus growls at Cassius, continuing to pat himself down. Dear gods, you really don't know how to do this. Punish it! Cassius lazily flops his paw in the air in a slapping motion. I snap my gaze to Amicus, glaring again. What? Well, no, I, I can't do that. Why not? It, it's in the contract. No physical punishments, just like Alexios. What? You heard me. Alexios is a sibling. It's barely even a child. He is mine and none of your business. Punishment is the only way to teach the lesser species, Amicus. He looks at me. You, creature, up. I'll hit you instead. Cassius! I jump up so does Cassius, ears ringing, and Amicus's deep voice bellows over me. Meanwhile, Kato just lounges on bed, listening. Or maybe not. I'll make this very clear right now. You are 
never to lay a paw on him or give him orders of any kind. Cassius, having recovered, raises an eyebrow at Amicus. And if I do, brother? Amicus' fur starts to lay flat on his shoulders again, but as he shrugs. I'll punch you. But you can't do that. We're not pups anymore. And if you call him it again, I'll do the same. Cassius seems to choke for a moment. Uh, uh, what in the world has gotten into you, Amicus? He looks at the older wolf. Cato! Yes, Cassius. Well, do something. He can't threaten me like that. Amicus, be nice to your brother. Cassius' ears turn bright and red, and he slumps on the bed, glaring at his remaining food. Anyway, if you two are finished, then be off to your studies. Don't be late this time, Amicus. Your tutor complained against again last week. Oh, that's today. You know you should take care of to start paying more attention. After seeing what you accomplished, I'm starting to lean towards trials and making my decision. The room suddenly goes very quiet. And Cassius, I need to speak for you for a moment before you leave. Amicus gets to his feet, and I do the same. The wolf glances at Cassius and Cato, but they're deep in conversation. He turns back to me. Ah, I forgot that it's my study day. So I'll be gone for a little while. I'm going to ask Alexios to show you around and give you something to do while I'm away. I feel myself grow tense at the idea of being without the only person I know around here. Seriously? Listen, you don't have to do anything. I'll make that clear to everyone, but I feel you might rather have something to do rather than sit in my room all day. He seems to think that the chores, that, that it's chores that I'm upset about rather than him leaving me alone. All right. Amicus frowns at me, and I can't help but feel a little bad. He does seem to be trying to make things as easy as possible for me. Sorry. I gesture as I still stay in front. Don't worry. Yes, wine isn't easy to get out of her, but I know you did it, and I deserved it. Ugh. Is it... He's speaking its language again? Shut up, Cassius. What? Lexios? And we kiss judges to the small cat who is currently stacking dirty dishes on top of each other. Could you please show Rainy around the palace along with the tasks and activities you do? He's unfamiliar with nearly everything. I would be happy to, Amicus. So you can order my pet around? Kito standing over by the door, like, clearly eager to leave. Sighs. Enough. Try to be reasonable, Cassius. Now both of you off to your studies, and a quick shower for you, Amicus. Amicus crumbles and starts to turn away, but then turns back to me, resting a paw on my shoulder. I'll be back towards. The, I'll be back towards the evening. The big wolf pauses, as if wanting to say more, but leaves me with a simple, "I'll see you then." With that, he gives me a little wave and another wink before following Cassius and Cato through the archway. Just Amicus, just as Amicus leaves, Cassius pauses, and gives me a sour look. Then again, most of his expressions are pretty sour, but still makes me uncomfortable. Then I'm left alone with the cat. I feel an odd sense of loneliness at seeing Amicus just leave like that. It's like my mother just dropped me off at preschool or something. He's the only one that's been treating me like an actual person. M mostly, at least. I hear the small sound of someone clearing their throat behind me. <clears throat> Hello. The cat smiles at me pleasantly. His paws collapse knees in front of him. I say he's small, but he's really about the same height as me. It's just odd seeing another alien that's my size when I've always had to look up at the wolves. Uh, hi. I see Alexios' left eye twitch, and he raises a paw to his head. Oh dear, this is going to be an interesting day. Something wrong? More twitching. Just my lingua. It'll take a while to learn your language, but it gets better the more you speak. So if you don't mind, I'd like to know more about you. I'm very curious. Uh... Ambicus told me to act dumb, so I tried to figure out how I might do that. 
a fixed, a fixed, distant look on my face. Far away. Lucius blinks, then giggles. <laughs> oh. You both stand there awkwardly for a moment before he gestures at the table. Well, why don't we have a seat? We eat their leftovers when they finished. Well, that's, that's messed up. The cat moves over to sit on Kido's bed, reaching out for his own small plate. I'm reminded of how hungry I am, so I quickly do the same, choosing to sit on Cassius's bed, since Amicus is covered in wine. Will this food agree? Will this food agree with your stomach? I think so. It actually looks like some of the stuff I eat back at home. I mean, it's basically olives, bread, and meat. I'll point to each of the dishes. Alexios puts his bob back up to his head. Oh my, so many words and in full sentences, too. I freeze. Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't really know what this food is, I'm just guessing. No, I mean, it's your words. So many of them in incomplete, complex sentences. Fuck, I'm bad at this. I guess the wolves uplifted intelligence a lot more back then. Oh, maybe. What if I ruined our plan already? But Lexios doesn't seem alarmed, just curious. So I turn my attention back to the food. There isn't much left on the table. The meat was mostly cleaned off the bones by Cato. Next to it are four slices of bread and a bowl of olives. Alexios starts on the poultry, working at it with his claws until it comes apart in two pieces with a loud tearing sound. He hands me one half. You should be able to find a little meat on there. I take it from him, trying not to show my disappointment. Then puts two slices of bread on the plate and slides it towards me before taking the remaining two. Make sure to use the cheese. The bread is bland without it. Pull a few thin strips of meat off the bone and taste it. It's good. Really, really good. And I quickly search bones for more, but there isn't much. Hungry? I look up and see Alexius delicately picking at his own food on half of a bird. Yeah, haven't eaten in a few days. Oh, really? Why not? The trip here was a bit rough. I guess it did eat on the ship, but it wasn't very filling. Oh, like the protein sludge they have? Yeah, that stuff is quite terrible. I can understand why you're hungry. Well, you won't have to worry. Why not? We eat dinner with our masters in their rooms. Amicus always serves himself very large portions, and also sneaks me my own food since Cassius doesn't dig much himself. Alexius slowly spreads cheese onto his bread. He will take good care of you in that respect. With the mention of Amicus, I start to feel a bit lonely again. Actually, something I've noticed is that this whole palace seems to be lonely. So, where is everyone? He chews thoughtfully on his bread. Hmm? I try to think of a way to fray things stupidly, so then I give up as he already knows that I'm a form of complex senses. This palace doesn't seem to have very many people around. Oh, well, do you expect others to be here? Well, I guess like servants or guards or some other officials? Most needs in the palace are covered by artificial intelligence and drones. Same goes for the palace defense. I suppose it may be different from where you're from, but the siblings have learned a long ago that fewer sapiens you have in a location that needs to be secure, the better. You and I are an exception. The bra bread tastes like literal chalk. So I decided to spray a little bit of the cheese on it despite the smell. To my surprise, it's salty and creamy and not bad at all. The smell is hard to ignore though. So what's the point of having a pet then? Amicus didn't tell you? Well, he did. He just mentioned status and stuff. If, is there any other reason? Why do we have to do stuff t for them if they have robots that can do it instead? Status is the main reason, yes. Our duty is to be by the side during public appearances or in official meetings. Obviously, having an artificial sapient doing the same thing isn't impressive at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. We don't really have a, to do anything annual in the palace, but Cassius likes the idea of a sapient being his servant. He says it reminds him of the old days. I see. Amicus told me that I don't really have to do anything for him. Except brush his fur. Ah, yes. Amicus is very meticulous about that. Do you know him as well? Fairly well. I've been here a few months now and have 
have my fair share of interactions with him, even though Cassius doesn't like it. I see. What do you think of him? I think that you're very lucky to have a master like Amicus. Why is that? Well, Amicus is very kind. Sometimes he tries to be all official and absurdive and he likes to tease, but he comes off as more open, whether he tends to or not. This all to compare to Cassius, of course. Think for a moment. Do you not like being Cassius's pet? There's a pause, though Alexios continues to smile. Cassius is very specific about it, he, how he wants to be talked to and such. But this is a great quality for a prospective emperor to have, for sure. But in casual conversation, it's much easier to talk to someone like Amicus. Take a sip of the wine, and as far as I can tell, it's similar to the few times I've had it on Earth. He has been really nice to me. At least after the whole kidnapping thing. He is a very nice person. He just tends to not think everything through. Well, that is the... Oh, Overstatement. <laughs> Alexios' eyes flick to look behind me before he focuses back on mine. Understand that normally we shouldn't speak so candidly about our masters. This is just a conversation between pets. Oh, yeah, I understand. There's a moment of silence that goes on just long enough to be uncomfortable. Yes, I thought that you would... I'd have to say that you're extremely perceptive, almost on the same level as a sibling. I wince internally as Alexios points out my intelligence again. All it took me ten minutes to fill my one and only job. Alexios smiles at me again. Was I not supposed to know that? Apparently he's perceptive as well. Uh, don't worry. Like I said, this is between pets. Alexios leans in conspiratorially. I don't just blab everything I know to my master. I'm simply his servant, not spy. He leans back again. Though he might wish I was, but honestly, it's really nice to be able to talk to someone other than my superiors. Amicus was the only one to treat me as an equal, but Cassius usually keeps her contact minimal. I put the last bit of bread in my mouth, and as soon as I do, Alexios sips up. Calm, we're finished. Yes, Alexios. I watch with fascination as the dishes levitate off the table and float away through the archway they originally came through. Yo, can we get plates like that? Like, seriously, can we have dishes like that? That would make things so much fucking easier. Do you want to go outside? Like I said, there's not much to do, but the gardens do require more sapient touch to keep them presentable. Yeah, sure. Brush crumbs off my jeans and stand up. I'm still hungry, but the amount I've eaten has taken the edge off of it, it at least. I follow Alexios quietly through the halls really enjoying the architecture of the palace for the first time. We enter the main hall and Alexios stands in the sunlight pouring in through the archways. Hmm. Aren't the mornings beautiful here? This is the best time to do work in the gardens. I'd say we have a good three hours before it gets too hot. Wow, it sounds like Alabama. We start walking out into the gardens when I'm suddenly struck by something odd. So you just said we have three hours. Yes. Well, how long is an hour here? The same. Oh, we use the same minutes and hours and stuff? That didn't seem possible. Alexios thinks, rubbing a paw above his left eyebrow. Ah, well, the lingua is a complicated device. It's parental text, so it's something that we don't really understand at all. But what we do know is that it translates language in a way that offers the best understanding possibility for the host. <clears throat> he crouches by a pillar, examining the ivory growing around its surface. I used a measurement of time specific to the wolves and their language, and the link was simply translated into a measurement you'd be you'd better understand. Small cat chuckles. <laughs> it's something I've given up on understanding myself. It's not perfect, but it and it can create really confusing situations, especially when it comes to certain words and numbers. Oh! I see Alexios single out a small white flower coloring at the base of the pillar before he plucks it out and sets it to the side. I start to wonder if maybe if I should learn the language. 
The lingua is impressive and all, but it doesn't seem like it's very specific. Alexios grins. Don't think too much about it. Just try to remember that it doesn't mean everything actually is the same. There are 19 hours in a day on that astro, which I imagine is at least somewhat different compared to your own planet. Anyway, what I'm doing right now is pulling some weeds. The drones are doing a good job watering and pest control, but they often miss smaller weeds like this. Crouch with the pillar next to Alex Alexios, searching through the ivy for weeds to pull at the base. So there are 19 hours in a day here. Yes. That's a bit shorter than back home. Oh, I get that. There are 30 hours in a day where I come from. We get used to it after a few weeks, though. I prefer it, actually. Oop. Whoops. Didn't mean to bump that. I turn my attention back to the pillar and suddenly find myself staring right at a strange crab-like thing sticking out to the stone. First I wonder if it's carving or something, since it's so big. But I look closer, it moves, and I realize that it's a massive living spider. The next thing I know, I'm rolling away from the pillar action movie style before popping back to my feet. Oh my god! What is it? S a spider thing! I'm sitting a good 10 feet away from the pillar now, but I can still see the massive spider. Its thick legs fanned out to the width of a clock. I shiver. Uh. <laughs> oh, I see. I stare at him. How is that funny? I'm sorry, they're, they're very startling when you first encounter them. Lexius walks up to the spider and starts making shooting motions at it. Even from here, I can see its beady black eyes. doesn't move at all, choosing to sit motionlessly, motionlessly on its pillar. Astrian arachnids and insects are disturbingly large compared to the ones on my home moon. I look around and suddenly feel like I'm in danger, imagining giant wasps descending from the sky. Alexios starts to look more frustrated as the spider refuses to be intimidated by his limp-wristed swipes. Nothing in the gardens is dangerous, though. They, need to, they are needed to balance the ecosystem. This creature's venom is far too mild to cause much more than an inchy bump if it bites at all. Next, he just gives another weak swipe at the spider and it takes the opportunity to bolt up his arm so fast that it becomes a blur before stopping on his face. For a moment, we both stand there in shock as it clings to him like a face hugger. Then, BY GOD, GET IT OFF! He dances around in the mo in place for a moment before he's simply watching in fascinated horror. Finally, he shakes his head hard, and the spider runs down the front and sculls across the ground and into some bushes. Lexios heaves for breath for a moment, trembling. <gasps> Despite myself, I have to laugh in amazement at what I just saw. <laughs> but why are you laughing? Sorry, it was just so surprising, and you were so sure of yourself until... <laughs> well, it surprised me. He shivers, rubbing his shoulders. There's honestly nothing to be afraid of when it comes to those, but it was right on me in the way they move. Ugh. And you just stood there and watched. I mean, what could I have I done? If that happened to me, I would have jumped into the pond. <sighs> he sighs, and I see his fur starting to flatten down again. He also chuckles. <laughs> well, I was about to. Anyway, let's get back to work. If you see another spire, just work around it. For the next hour, we move from pillar to pillar, cleaning up the unwanted weeds. I'm way more vigilant now, checking every pillar for spiders before we start. Luckily, we don't come across mo anymore. After a while, we finally sit on the bench under some trees and calm floats a few platters of tiny pastries that remind me of quiche. Those are followed by glasses of cold green vegetable tasting drinks. Oh, green goddess. It's delicious. So can I ask where you're from? Very far away. Even further than your home. What brought you here? Hmm. It's a bit complicated. But I was here as sort of an ambassador. 
I arrived just as the strut drive depletion occurred. What was that? Hmm. Well, for whatever reason, Roman has stopped by, stopped supplying the wolves with a stretch drive power when the Emperor died. They're starbound right now, so they can't shuttle me back to my planet. The situation between the wolves and the parents is worrying, and we don't know how long the wolves will be without the stretch. So, my people sent their own ship to retrieve anyone on that Astra, but I, uh, missed it. Missed it? He frowns, looking embarrassed again. Well, I slept in and missed the departure. Wow, really? I mean, it happens to the best of us now. I guess. Well, why didn't they wait for you? That's kind of messed up that they just leave. When using stretch, ta stretch tech, time is important. Everything runs on a specific schedule, so if you miss it, you miss it. And they're certainly not going to send another one f out for that one person. Wow. Didn't you have an alarm clock or someone to wake you? Trust me, it was a series of many unfortunate events that led to that happening. The main one being that even though I woke up with enough time to reach the starport, I got lost in Ad Astra City's terrible public transportation system. Oh, sounds like Atlanta. I was running from platform to platform, wolves all around me trying to touch me before, in, because they'd never seen a cat before. And I could barely read the signs because, well, for my species, water comes from the eyes when we're stressed, so... Oh, you were crying. You know what that is? Yeah, my species does it. Yeah, my species does it too. He looks away and I can see the insides of his ears turn red. I, I didn't know that. It's a shared trait amongst us and the wolves. I, I didn't know many others do it aside from the Chemians. Anyway, I eventually decided to use my situation to continue my work and build a relationship with the Imperial family, so I became Cassius's pet. Jesus Christ, what's going on here? Alexios' situation doesn't sound all that different from mine, even though the reasons for us getting here were very, very different. When does the next ship come? Hmm. Years. At least one a decade, but sometimes more. I'm hoping we with the next few years, though. I'm sorry to hear that. It's not the worst life. The wolves treat me well enough. And we do have a special relationship with Cassius. Between us and the wolves... Unlike other siblings, our parents originated from the same galaxy. Though our views are very different, there's a pawn there. He brushes his paws together. Are you dead? Yeah. Calm, we're finished. And with that, the platters and glasses float away. I'm starting to get used to all of this. But, rainy, was it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess we skipped introductions. You already know me as Alexios, but you can call me Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello, Rainy. So that they're no longer pretending that you're not so sapient anymore, where are you from? Tell me about yourself. That gives me some pause. Well, he's been really nice to me so far, I know I can't just reveal everything to Alex. So I settle on being vague like he was. Well, I'm from far away, but probably less far away than you. I'm a primate. I see. Are you important among your people? No, I'm just a student. Oh, do you know why Amicus chose you then? I think he chose me at random. I just happened to be where the uplift occurred. Uh, <laughs> it's just like Amicus. Yeah, it is actually. But I guess it makes sense to choose a commoner if he wanted to unite the abandoned children again. Oh yeah? I decided to shift the conversation away from me. It was a good tactic for me now. Yeah, didn't he explain that to you? Uh, maybe a little. He didn't tell me all that much. I don't take it personally. Amicus doesn't think. Often think ahead.
right now, the wolves are in a bit of a strange situation. Again, this is between you and me, but they've fallen behind the other siblings in the term of spread and resources. The main reason being is that they don't uplift their children to similar intelligence levels as themselves. Intelligence levels? I thought they just spread their culture. Mm -mm. You don't know? I guess you were abandoned, but you should know that your intelligence, every child's intelligence, was uplifted by a sibling. Oh, no. I, I guess we lost that bit of information. Well, that's not the end of their problems. These children are indentured servants in a way. In exchange for having their intelligence mostly uplifted, they have to serve the Empire until the debt is repaid. That doesn't sound good. Oh, and how long has that been going on? Well, let's just say that the first successfully uplifted wolf children haven't quite finished repaying their debt. That sounds like slavery. He glances at me. It does, doesn't it? That's confusing me. But if they have all these robots and stuff, why do they need sapiens to be their slaves? Advanced artificial sapiens are gifted by the parents. We can't build them. We're a bit spoiled here in the palace, but outside not so much. And even then, artificial sapiens isn't perfect and likely never will be. Actual thinking machines don't exist. That's why uplifting children to the same intelligence levels as a sibling is important. Good ideas can come from anywhere. I guess your people don't do what the wolves do. No, we uplift our children as much as we can. This practice is isolated to the wolves. They are seen by other siblings as harsh on their own children and the rights of sapiens in general. I see. I'm starting to see why the wolves and even Amicus in a whole new light. As if reading my mind, Alex goes on. But things are changing. Amicus choosing you as his pet shows that he sees you as close to an equal. But then there's Cassius. His tail switches around on the bench between us. He'd rather things say he'd rather things stay the same, or even regress. But that's why he made a strong challenge against Amicus. There are many wolves who are unsure of the challenge Amicus suggests, and the proposed alliance between wolves and the Chemians is only adding to it. Chemians? They're another sibling species, the most powerful in the galaxy, in fact. But that worries a lot of people here. There hasn't been a war between siblings in over a hundred years. But the last one was between the Chemians and the wolves. You can imagine what sort of problems that might create. So Cassius wanting the wolves to stay independent and in complete control of their children is rather popular. You might wonder why I'm telling you this, but I want you to understand that the empire that you're in, it will make it easier to navigate. I was in fact wondering why he's telling me all of this. Does he have some sort of other motive that he's not telling me? Look over at him. Do you want Cassius to become emperor? I like that we can discuss a lot of things, and being si a sibling allows me to have more freedom than most, but that's one thing I should probably keep silent on. That only confuses me more, but it doesn't sound like he's on Cassius' side. Maybe Amicus and I could finally find an ally in him. Well, I think I would prefer Amicus if this whole thing is to treat other sapiens secretly. From what I can tell, that seems to please Alex. Well. We'll find out soon enough after the trials. Alex's mood suddenly brightens in. But anyway, I've really been enjoying our time together today. Like I said, it's so nice to be able to talk to someone who isn't my superior. I hope we can do this often while you're here. Yeah, of course. Wonderful. Alex raises Apollo up to the sun at Vita. We should keep working. It's starting to get too hot out here. For the next several hours, we work around the garden before finally moving inside to walk around the palace a bit. He points to doors for things like the throne room, the communal path, which we never go inside, but he tells me I should only do so when I'm with Amicus. Eventually we move back to the dining room where Alexio suggests we watch the screens until our masters return. He says it'll better acquaint me with wolvish culture. It takes a moment to realize that I'm watching some sort of film starring wolves similar to Amicus. They're acting out scenarios about traveling into space and finding more sapiens. The sapiens species. They find our wolves in masks. 
I guess because they don't have CGI, but it looks because every effect looks practical. It's long, boring, and the acting is overly exaggerated, like they're in a silent film. Finally, after what seems like a good three hours, Alex tells me that Amicus will be returning soon, and I might want to tidy up his room before he gets back. I'm relieved to cut the film short, and Alex and I part ways to go to our respective rooms. Surprised to see that it's already dark outside. Even with a shorter day, I guess mindlessly watching wolves overreacting to other wolves and masks took up more time than I thought. On my way through the marble halls, I pause every now and then to look at large murals on the walls depicting everything from wolves swimming to wolves singing, swinging swords at other canines. In the Great Halls is the largest mural. It depicts five wolves. The features are flat and lack of any sort of perspective, making the muzzles look a bit askew. Two large wolves loom over three. One is white with a feminine shape, one larger of the two is black, holding a paw to his chest. Around his head is a wreath. <clears throat> one of the three smaller wolves. Of the three smaller wolves, one is also clearly feminine, while another is white. I wonder if this might be Cassius and Virginia, which will leave the remaining wolf in the middle to be Amicus. He's skinnier, and I wonder that if this might be him as a child or a teenager. A glowing wreath floats above his head. <clears throat> I jump as someone clears their throat very loudly next to me. I turn around and find myself staring at Cato, the advisor. He looks me up and down for a moment. At least I think he does. More silence. I open my mouth to respond, but then remember what Amicus told me. I let my eyes unfocus, and my mouth droop open a bit. Uh... Kyo's ears twitch at the sound I make as he clears his throat again. <clears throat> Hello. Rainy, was it? How are you enjoying your first day in the palace? I wonder if I should keep droning or if I should at least answer the question. I'm technically a sapien, so uh, I suppose it's okay if I, if I sort of understand. Uh... Good... Left side of Kato's scarred face twitches as he waits for more, but then I don't give him anything. Good, good. I trust that Alexia showed you around the palace. It's a bit stifling life behind these walls, but hopefully that will. But hopefully, with time, we will be able to take you out of to the city. I cross my eyes a little. Oh, I like it. Yes. So, where are you from, again, exactly? There's something behind the wolf's words, something that's a little more innocent, a little more than innocent curiosity. A uh, big rock planet by star. He waits again, and I don't say anything more. Do you have a name for the planet? Yeah, big rock planet. He massages the left side of his forehead, looking a bit annoyed. Big rock planet. With water. He stares. So, big rock planet with water. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever, man. Wonderful, now I have a headache. That he disappears around the corner. I decide I did an okay job as Kato seems to think I'm a massive idiot. Himbo! I make my way quickly to Amicus's room, I'm glad not to run into anyone else. There's much to do, and because his room was spotless, so after meandering around, smoothing the bed covers, I choose to sit down on the sofa and wait. Despite the fact that I've only been up for what seems to be ten hours, I'm exhausted. Yo, me too, bro. Maybe I won't have any trouble adjusting to the shorter days. As I start to doze, there's a sudden clattering sound towards the door. I jump to see Amicus come in, wheeling in a tray with several plates on top of it, heaped high with food. He grins at me, and I get a feeling of relief seeing him. Hello. Sorry, I suppose Alex didn't tell you that they set, they set these outside the door on the 15th hour. He treat you well? Yeah, he was nice. And we guess wheels the cart up to the sofa, then flops back onto it next to me, making the whole thing shake. Oh! 
<sighs> that was a long day. You okay? He opens one eye at me. Barely. Had to go over maths today, and my head feels like if it keeps going, and my head feels as if it's going to explode. That didn't help that Balbas kept cracking me over the head with a stick when I answered wrong. Wow, that sounds harsh. Don't worry. It's nothing compared to the one you gave me. <laughs> he seems to have become more comfortable around me with how relaxed he is. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Don't be and stop apologizing for it. Now let me wash and eat. My stomach felt hollow since breakfast. Both go to the restroom and rinse our paws slash hands in the sink before heaping our plates with food. It's more of the same bread and meat and olives, but there's also a good amount of other vegetables and fruit that I have a hard time identifying. Amicus shows me how to combine the fruit and cheese on the bread, and I find myself starting to like the smelly spread, as long as I ignore the spell. Compared to breakfast, Amicus really wolfs down a lot of food. He probably ends up eating about three times as much as me. All the while, he tells me about his scary instructor and how he punishes him way more than Cassius. Well, does he usually get the answers right? Well, yeah, but he should help me understand rather than smack my ears. It doesn't help anything unless he has the information in his stick and is bashing it into my brain somehow. Don't worry, I hate math too. Well, I'm better in other things like liter literature and history. Ha! <laughs> Cassius is hopeless at remembering battles. Amicus flexes hit a bicep. And he can't forget about wrestling. He can never beat me in a fight. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. So, yes, he can have the mass all he wants. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. The trials don't involve that anyway. What are these trials you guys keep talking about? It takes a big gulp of wine gasping when he finally pulls the goblet away from his face. <sighs> what Cato is considering using to decide the next emperor, essentially three trials, music, dance, and music and dance, rhetoric, and finally combat. And whoever wins those becomes emperor. Well, whoever wins two out of three. Combat is last, so if one of us wins the first two, it won't come to that. I'm really just hoping that Cato chooses me in the next few days now that he's seen you. But if the trials do happen, you have nothing to worry about. He grins at me confidently. I don't. I'm better than Cassius in at least two of those things. Perhaps even in music and dance. You know, I believe you. But the one thing I know about you is how um, overly confident you are when it comes to certain things. Why do you say that? Our entire experience in the ship, maybe? That's different. I was doing something I didn't really understand, and I understand my studies, aside from math. Amicus leans back finally, one paw on his stomach. Anyway, how was your day? Did I like show you around? He starts to grab the remaining food to set aside on his own, pl on its own plate. Yeah, I realize that there isn't much to do. Ah, yeah, it was a bit of a bad day. I have tomorrow off from studies, though. So we can do something entertaining. Like what? Oh, I don't know. Go swimming, go to the baths, talk, you name it. Maybe eventually we can go into the city, too. The city outside? Well, everything's outside. I mean, the one I can see across the lake. Yes, that one. Ad Astra City, the capital of our empire. Oh, isn't it kind of small for that? I mean... It looks really nice, but it just kind of looks like an average-sized city. Hmm. I think it's quite large. How big are cities on Earth? I don't know. Pretty big. Millions of people. Raises an eyebrow. Millions? Yeah. I wonder if the lingua is translating everything correctly. Why, how big is Ad Astra? The city? Just over 5 million. The world population is 80 million. Oh, how many humans are there? Like seven billion. Oh, what? Is that a lot? 
That's preposterous! Do you not have population control measures put in place? Well, not in most places. Oh my god. Well, you are parentless, so I guess it makes sense your species might be so misguided. He seems to try very hard to choose the last word, even though he's still being very condescending. He seems to know my annoyance, though. Well, is your species doing well? Is your plan able to sustain such a population? Sort of, I guess. I guess there's problems. Hmm. Well, I suppose when I become emperor, I can ask the parent about your species. The whole thing is really a mystery. But it's clear that we must have overlooked your people somehow. He smiles at me. Maybe we can even bring you into our fold again. Whoa, hang on a sec. Images of Roman spaceships descending from the heavens to enslave the human race, all because of me, flashed through my mind. You know, Alex told me what you do to other sapiens. It doesn't sound like something humans would want to be a part of. What did he tell you? The whole enslavement thing? Enslavement? What you do to your children? Well, that's a harsh word for it. No, it's the right word. Humans have done the whole indentured servant thing back on Earth, and it never turned out well for the servant. His ears go down a bit. And as misguided as humans might be, at least we've abolished slavery. I notice his ears turning very red. Maybe he never expected to be lectured by <laughs> on ethics by a human. Well, uh, I, I do mean to change things when a bit when I do become emperor. A bit? I mean, things can't just be changed all at once. It has to be gradual. Hmm. Amicus flicks his tail in annoyance at me. Listen, I agree with you. We've been trying to change the way we've treated our children for generations. My grandfather and father both worked towards this. Well, while that's messed up and definitely wrong, I think the intelligence thing might be even worse. What intelligence thing? The grimace on Amicus's face tells me that he might already know the answer. The way you stunted intelligence in the children you uplifted. Amicus is silent for a moment. I can tell all of this is making him very uncomfortable. I have to ask myself again how I got to this point, sitting on a sofa debating ethics with the prospective Emperor Wolf. He finally folds his arms and huffs. <sighs> again, I agree with you on all of this. I don't like the way we've treated our children. In the end, I truly feel that becoming a more compassionate and united empire will lead to, do, will lead to a better outcome for everyone. It's going to take small steps, but understand that it's something I mean to fix. Wow, if all politicians were like that. So stop saying you like I did. I was born into this. I come to realize how much of an open book Amicus is as a person, so I don't doubt his words. Well, as long as Cassius doesn't become emperor. <laughs> not a chance. Well, if he does, it sounds like he's going to reverse all of that. And I'm saying there's no chance of it. Wait, how much has Alex been telling you? It was a short conversation. I asked him about the Empire. I didn't, but I didn't want to get Alex in trouble in case he wasn't supposed to tell me. Cassius seems like a terrible... Car Cassius seems like a terrible person, by the way. And I'm not just talking about his personality. He wants to keep people enslaved. It's complicated. He's just very traditional, but again, there's no chance. <sighs> Man. You do know your brother far better than I do. Well, I'm at least glad that I'm behind the right wolf I'm getting in getting myself home. The right wolf? Yeah, I can't imagine being under your brother. Hmm. Speaking of, I'm going to bring this to Alex in the garden. Did you want to accompany me? Hmm. Actually, can I use the shower while you're gone? I feel kind of gross. Oh yeah, sure. Just step in and it starts up. There's a screen on the wall that controls the temperature and it has a color spectrum that you can drag across, drag a finger across. I'll figure it out. Oh, right. Well, I should be back in by the time you're finished. 
And with that, Emicus balances the plate of food in his paws as he strides out of the room, leaving me to go into the bathroom. I quickly use the toilet again, suddenly glad that I don't have to use a public toilet like the ones I've been I've seen drawings in my Roman history books. The shower is easy enough to understand. The water is immediately warm and pleasant, so I don't have to bother with the temperature. There are several glass bottles of soap, so I choose the one that smells the best and give myself a quick wash. When I'm done, I grab a towel off the wall and dry off before wrapping it around my waist. I think about putting my clothes back on, but the idea of stepping back into underwear has me hesitating. Instead, I open the door and I'm greeted to the side of Amicus sitting on the edge of the bed, looking off to the side, a paw in his lap holding a brush. His head snaps up in my direction before he immediately averts his eyes. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to see him. I, I thought you'd be dressed. Hey, it's fine. I've got the towel on. Slowly, he turns his gaze back to me, eyes drifting down to my torso before immediately snapping back up. Oh, I, I, I thought you hated any sort of nudity. Not really, just the genitals. Even then, I, I don't hate it. It's just more private. Ah. Emika seems to be staring at me, and I'm starting to feel a little self-conscious. Is everything okay? He looks away again. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just not used to seeing you like that. I've only seen humans with clothing and just sort of you know, imagine you always be that way. Well, my clothes are dirty, so I was going to ask you maybe about getting some clean ones. At least, you, at least until you can get me to that tailor. Oh, of course. Calm. Send us some robes from the storage. Children's robe, please. Yes, Amicus. Thanks. Thanks, of course. I stand there awkwardly for another few seconds until Amicus seems to snap back to reality. He holds up the brush. Anyway, I thought you might like to be groomed, too. I feel it's only fair what you did for me. Uh, well, it's only on my head. <laughs> All the easier for me, then. <laughs> um, Alright. Walk over to the bed, so with my back to the wolf. Amicus adjusts his seating to face me more directly, then he starts to run the brush gently through my hair. We sit in silence for a bit, and I start to enjoy the feeling of the brush sending the brushing, especially the way it sends the firm bristles run across my scalp, giving me shivers up and down my neck. Sorry for talking so much earlier. I'm, I'm not used to being able to talk to someone. The palace is a bit lonely, and so having a friendly conversation with someone other than calm is a bit of a novelty. <laughs> that was probably why I was having so much trouble focusing on my studies today. I was so excited to come back home and speak with you. Aww, he likes us. That's so sweet. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Hearing that makes me feel a little bad for the wolf. I suppose being the prospective emperor doesn't allow you to have many friends, and being in such an empty palace definitely seems lonesome. I guess this is why Alex told me basically the same thing. You're fine. And I didn't mean to be too harsh earlier. I, I know it's not your fault. No, I think we're on the same page on that one. All the more reason to unite against Cassius, eh? Oh! As if you've forgotten something, Amicus. Another paw comes around my side, and on his palm, I see two purple grapes. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh, excuse me. Sorry, I'm drinking beer over here, and makes me burn. I managed to snatch a few of those off of Alexio's earring. He wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> Want one? Seriously? I take one, more out being nice to Amicus than anything. When I bite into it, I can't help but notice how juicy and sweet it is. Amicus talks to me with a grape in his mouth. Mmm. I don't know why, but his grape earrings always taste the best. By the way, if you don't mind, I invite Alex to our outing tomorrow. Cassie is going to be away to do some speeches and is leaving Alex behind for once. Of course not. We got along really well. I lean my head back, allowing the wolf to continue the brushing. Your fur... hair, you call it? It's not like wolf's fur, but it's rather nice. 
Thank you, Amicus. If you'd like, I can do this for you every day. I feel that's fair. I have to admit, I really like it. So I accept. Sure. Feels really nice. I hear some thumping sounds, and I imagine it's Amicus's tail wagging against the bed. <laughs> so washing you, brushing you, and making you smell nice are all my duties. Well, that and accompanying me for important meetings and public outings. But you do during those in. But all you do during those is stand there and look civilized. Yeah, that's why you all keep telling me. This all seems pretty easy. Though, there is one thing you could do for me before I go to bed. Um, are we going to uh, do, do the doom? I mean, does he have the same anatomy as me, or is it more canine-like? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> what? Oh, full body massage. Oh. <laughs> full body massage. Yeah, you know, hey, you know, I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you, baby. Look over at my shoulder, and or we can just stick with the other duties. <laughs> I laugh and Amicus's ears come back up. He continues to brush for a little while longer before finally setting his side. There. Looks much better now. I gently run a hand over my hair and I have to agree that it feels softer than I'd ever felt before. But anyway, Rennie. I'm looking forward to these months ahead with you. Even though we started off a bit poorly. I look back at the wolf and at his earnest but tentative smile. He's definitely a man of contradictions. Rash half the time, but considerate most of the time. I'm not sure what to make of him, but at this point I feel like I can at least trust him. That's saying a lot after what he put me through. Smile back. Yeah. Me too. The next day, Amicus wakes me up gently by shaking my shoulder. Hey. Hey, Rainy, wake up. <clears throat> I roll over on my sofa, groggily putting, pulling the blanket up around me as I shiver. Ugh, it's so cold in here. Oh, I can turn the heat up if you'd like. I just tend to sweat a little when it's too warm. I'll make you sweat. <laughs> Seriously, I wouldn't get tired of looking at this, you know. Like, not at all. I'd be like, mmm. What's up, baby? <laughs> Could you just give me a better blanket? Oh, of course. I'm in my underwear. My Romanesque underwear. Last night, Amicus had shown me a bit awkwardly how to tie it on. While it's comfortable, it always feels a little loose, and there's a constant worry that it's just going to drop off at some point. Anyway, we should get going soon. Alex is probably already waiting for us. <sighs> for what? We're going to the island for a picnic. You wanted something to do, didn't you? Oh, yeah, right. I need my morning coffee. I get up and grab my new robe off the back of the sofa. Don't bother with a shower today since we'll be swimming. Well, I will anyway. Amicus moves to the bathroom and pulls out a large glass bottle filled with a clear liquid. He pours it into a glass cap and notices me watching. Oh, would you like to try some? I suppose your species cares about dental hygiene considering your teeth look alright. What is it? A wash that simply cleans your cleans the teeth. Keeps the brush fruit from becoming offensively odorous. Yo, can we get can we get this shit? Like, a wash that just keeps your teeth clean? I mean, come on. We, you know. We humans are the epitome of laziness, yet we have not developed something that, you know, you just splash a liquid on your teeth and they're automatically whitened and cleaned? I mean, come on. He holds out the cap and I take it from him as he pours the liquid straight into his mouth. I sniff it, and though I expected a minty smell, it's floral instead. Is this all you use to clean your teeth? 
Amikaza swishes the liquid around in his mouth for a while and spits it into the sink. It removes any surface level debris, but should you get a deeper cleaning from a drone at least once a week. I can show you how to do that later too if you'd like. That kind of sounds terrifying. Maybe. Honestly, you're supposed to do this every morning, but I forgot yesterday and all the excitement that we had. I left the liquid filled cap to my mouth, and with a little hesitation, I poured in. Oh, God, that's a nasty taste. No. The taste reminds me of walking into a room that's just been sprayed with air freshener. Not exactly pleasant. But when I spit in into the sink, I notice bits of what I assume to be plaque floating down the drain, and my mouth does feel a lot more fresh. Yo, yo like, seriously, like, can we get this shit? Can we get this shit? Guess it works. Amicus seems impatient, though, shifting his weight from one foot to the other. Ready, Rainy? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you have a bathing suit or something? Uh, like clothes for swimming? Amicus steps out into, out of the room and into the main hallway as I follow him. At the same time, I'm finished tying my, on my robe, trying to make sure everything isn't correct. Uh, is bleh, how to English? Trying to make sure everything is correctly in place. No, we swim nude. But if you prefer to have something on, you could use your undergarments. I can't imagine. I can't imagine that would be comfortable. But Alex does it. Just as he says the cat's name, I see him standing in the hall, carrying a heavy-looking basket in both arms. Once he sees us, he smiles. Hello, Amicus. Hello, Rainy. Good to see you again. How are you this morning? I'm about to respond, but Amicus is already speaking. Good, good. You got all the food, Alex? Uh, yeah. Though are you sure it's not against protocol that I took all of this? Well, it would be if I didn't approve it. Now let's go. Alex and I follow the excited wolf swishing his tail as we head towards the front archways, an area that I've never been to before. <clears throat> I hear a familiar grunt, and we all stop to turn around. Kato is standing there, watching us, stoic as always. Where might you three be off to? Uh, hello, Kato. Uh, we're going for a swim. A swim? I can't exactly tell what's going on behind that visor, but the tone in his voice doesn't seem all that enthusiastic. Amicus seems to sense it, too. Yes? A moment of silence goes by. You know you have combat training today, Amicus. Well, yes, but only for part of the day. We'll be back shortly after noon. Kato's face is twitched, and I can sense the disapproval coming off of him in waves. Then he turns his head slightly in my direction. You're taking the pets. I quickly face my face into a milled distant stare. Yes, I thought we could all use a little fresh air. Kato goes on staring for a moment, and I start to believe what Amicus said about Kato not having a good mood. Finally, the old wolf turns his attention back to Amicus. Well, I have some of my duties to take care of this morning. But I expect you to be in the amphitheater by the 11th hour. Do not be late. With that, he turns and stalks off down the hall before disappearing around the marble corner. Amicus lets out a breath. <sighs> I thought he was going to cancel our outing altogether. All right, let's go before anything else tries to stop us. Amicus quickly turns towards the archway and again leads us out into the warm morning air. You seem very eager, Amicus. Well, I haven't been swimming in for weeks, and I need a good exercise. As we walk, I notice Alex huffing and puffing, struggling with the basket, so I hold up my hand. Here. Do you need any help? Oh, I don't want to inconvenience you. I reach out and take the handle of the basket, and Alex doesn't resist as I pull it out of his paws. It's heavy, but not impossible to carry. I heft it in both my hands as we walk down the path towards the lake. Are you sure it isn't too heavy? I'm fine. I think someone else might be able to handle it a bit better than us. Especially since I imagine it's mostly his food. Amicus' ears perk up at my pointed statement. Oh, is it heavy? Amicus turns and yanks the basket for me, easily swinging it in one paw. 
Should have said something. Though I have to give it back once we get to shore. I'll be swimming to the island. I frown. Is it far? Well, of course you'll be taking the sightseer. What is that? Alex moves up to walk alongside me. You'll see, it's sort of a hovercraft for sightseeing, as the name implies. Oh shit, cool. A few minutes we reach to the shoreline where there's a small gazebo with various boats underneath it. There's also what looks like a jet ski, and next to that, a glass box with an open top. This is what Alex and Amicus walk up to, the wolf leaning over to drop the picnic basket inside. Once he does, he strips off his underwear and tosses it into the glass craft as well. I look away and notice Alex do the same, his ears down as he blushes furiously. I try to ignore the wolf, and I walk up to the strange little craft, noticing that there is an opening space on the side of the box that allows us to get in. The floor is glass as well. You can see dirt and vegetation underneath us. Race you to the island! Amicus cheerfully waves at us before running into the lake, the wolf's bushy tail swooshing around his over his naked butt. Uh, so inappropriate. Alex shakes his head and turns to the slanted glass panel attached to the side of the craft. He touches it and several bright characters come to life on the screen. A few seconds later, a little glass craft levitates off the ground and starts to move over the water, albeit at a very slow pace. Wow, what is this thing? A sightseeing craft. Parental tech. It's very safe and easy to navigate. I watch as we start to float over the slightly choppy water. Amicus is already about 10 meters out in front of us. He's a pretty good swimmer. We're just slow. That's why he turned it into a race, because he knows we won't beat him, even if we're going at full speed. Sure enough, Amicus starts to widen the gap. I notice Alex's ears are twitching as he navigates our craft, looking left and right to avoiding looking at the water altogether. Do you not like swimming? Oh, I hate large bodies of water. It's a bit stressful coming out of here, honestly. But the island is serene, and for the most part, it makes the trip worth it. Ah, feelings are kind of like that on, uh, I mean, my planet, too. Cringe and really almost revealed the name of my planet. It's pretty blatant, but Alex goes on like he didn't even notice. Well, yes, similar origins and all, but honestly, I'm a bit surprised that you're doing so well yourself, or that you even decided to come out here. That comes off as a little strange to me, but I'm distracted watching Amicus get closer to the island. Maybe only 50 meters now? I start to get an idea, though. Judging by the distance between us, Amicus, and the island, I feel like I might be able to beat him. I grin and start stripping off my robe. What are you doing? We're not on the island yet. He blushes furiously again, looking away. I'm going to beat him. What? I grab onto the edge of the glass barrier and swing my legs over. No! Alex actually tries to lunge before me. His ball is just barely missing as I plunge into the lake. I don't have much to think about why, because I'm instantly surrounded by freezing cold water. I come up gasping from the shock before I spot the direction of the island and start swimming towards it. It's been a while since I've really had a chance to swim. I've always been pretty good at it, and even though I get into the familiar motions of putting one arm over the other while turning my head to take breaths. While this is going on, I can still hear Alex shouting behind me. But then as I feel as I'm about to gain on Amicus, I get rammed by something heavy and furry that starts to pull me into its grasp. At first, I wonder if I've been captured by some kind of Ad Astrin sea monster. Maybe that's why Alex is freaking out. But just I'm about to re re resign myself to that fate. Rainy, don't worry, I've got you! I stop fighting against the big furry arms wrapping around me as I feel Amicus kicking his legs under mine pulling me sort of towards the island that's a few dozen meters away now. W what are you doing? I try to pull away, but Amicus f keeps me in a fierce death grip, refusing to loosen up at all. By, by gallon! I look up and see Alexios dumping out the basket full of food into the sight's ear before throwing the basket at me. Use this! It'll keep you above water! It hits me in the face before gently bobbing away in the waves. What the hell 
is going on? I tried to pull away from Amkis one last time, but give up, leaning into his chest with a bewildered expression on my face. He kicks his feet awkwardly under mine before I finally feel our feet drag into the shifting sand under the water. Even then, Amicus doesn't let me go. He keeps a firm grip around my wrists as he pulls me to shore, bringing us onto the little island. Are you alright? Amicus puts his paws on my shoulders, his eyes wide looking into mine, breathing heavily. Yes, what the hell just happened? Ah, oh, God. I rub my nose where the basket hit me in the face. That's when Alex's little craft gently pushes onto the sand. He hops out, running up it to us. I don't know what happened, Amicus. He just jumped out. I'm sorry I couldn't stop him. Alex bows deeply, his ears flattened and trembling. I started to wonder if there was something in the water that I wasn't supposed to come in contact with. I look at my skin, but everything seems fine. I look up at Amicus, trying to ignore his dick as it swings between his legs. Oh, hello! Hello. <laughs> that mean that means our boy is hung. <laughs> Them kiss seems to notice this at the same time and covers up his crotch with his paw, keeping the other on my shoulder. Can you just explain to me what happened? Uh Ooh. Hello. Hello. Yeah, move, move, move your hand. No, wait, no, we can't move. He can't move his hands, otherwise we're gonna be banned. Well, you can't swim. You're hopeless in the water. That's why I wanted you in the craft. Alex lips tremble a bit, as if he's about to cry. You're not born with natural swimming abilities. Whenever your primate falls into water, they all are sure to drown. Are you sure you're okay? I'm, I'm so so sorry. The way they explained to me how primates work reminds me that they still might not consider me on the, the same intelligence levels as them. It's like I don't know my own species' capabilities. That I just jumped in because I'm a stupid barbarian. It irritates me, but both of them look almost traumatized, especially Amicus. Paul not concealing his crotch is still frankly locked onto my shoulder, as if I'm worried I'm going to run off into the water again. Guys, I can swim. I mean, yeah, it's not natural for us, but we can learn. I've known how to swim since I was a kid. They still stare back at me in that, as if not understanding. Really? Well, yeah. Do you think I just jumped out of the thing just to drown myself? And because let's go of my shoulder to cover his dick with both paws now. I don't know. I, I know you're unhappy here, but I, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> I'm not that unhappy. I'm fine. But you know, I'm not an idiot. I thought you would know this by now, Amicus. Things go quiet. Alex looking off to the side with his ears down. Amicus standing awkwardly, covering his crotch with both paws. So did I ruin our outing? No, no, I just remember that you're not a typical child. Now, uh, let's try to relax and have some fun. The whole reason we came out here after all. Alex st still looks a bit dejected, looking off towards the sights here. I ruined our food. I'm sorry. Alex bows again. I remember how Alex isn't really supposed to know about my intelligence or anything about me, really. But if he's bothered by the conversation that took place, he's not showing it. Amicus shrugs. Stop bowing. It makes me feel strange. Naked Wolf ambles over to the craft, then leans over to look at the cluttered mess inside. He lifts his tail, and we get a better view of his butt again. Yo, yo can, 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 I, can I see it? Please, can, can, I, can, I, can I get a look at it?
Alex looks away blushing, but at this point, I think I've given up on trying not to see the various naked parts of this wolf. Being the nude seems pretty natural for him, even if he tries to hide it from us. I think we can salvage a decent bit, decent meal out of this. The wine's good. Amicus lifts a large ball of wine in the air, still not turning around. I I'll sort through it, Amicus, please. Enjoy your swimming exercises in the meantime. Alex quickly moves to start gathering up the food and head down. Well, all right. And here's up, Alex. We're here to have fun. Alex puts his ears up, but doesn't lift his head to look at us. Oh, right. Wolf grins at me, dipping his muzzle down to his crutch. Cats are just like when you, it comes to this, or like you when it comes to this sort of thing. Anyway, I'll get into the water so you won't have to keep averting your eyes. You should join me now that we know you can actually swim, Rainy. I start to follow, then look back at the cat. Uh, do you need any help, Alex? Alex shakes his head quickly, but I can still see that he's blushing. Go on and swim, Rainy. I'll be sunbathing anyway. There isn't much room for the sightseer for two people, and Amicus seems to be waiting for me, so I follow the wolf out towards the water. Intelligence. Intelligent conversation and a swimming partner? I have a pet that can do it all. Amicus shoulders me as we walk along the beach, making me stumble. Hey! I say it warningly, even though I know he's joking. You know I have to wonder why you'd take me out here if you didn't think I could swim. Everyone enjoys the beach whether they can swim or not. The sand becomes too hot to walk along the beach, so I have to jog at least 10 meters or so went to the wet sand, sighing as the waves cool my burning feet. Amicus catches up. Too hot? I suppose I should remember to, that you are a bit more fragile than the other species. Fragile? Well, I mean, well, a bit, I mean. I, when we fought on the ship, I had to hold back a lot. Gave Amicus a shove, the wolf stumbling more than he probably would have if he wasn't covering up his junk. Well, hey! Then I wade out into the shallows, the water quickly coming up to my shoulders. I stick to the shore, treading water as, as I watch Amicus splash around, doing sort of lunging swim that reminds me of the butterfly stroke. Just a lot more clumsy. After a few minutes, he swims up next to me. You doing alright? I'm still unsure of you being out in the water. Hey, don't start. I know what I'm doing. Alright, alright. But even experienced swimmers can have accidents. So, let me know if you need help or anything. Amicus stands right in front of me, his fur plastered tightly against his chest. I will. The wolf shields his eyes from the sun with a paw as he looks around. Anyway, do you want to have a race around the island? We can stay in the shallows. I usually do it with cats all the time as a pup. I could run on the small island, deciding that the distance is short enough that I can manage it. Alright, sure. Alright, Rainy, but be warned. I won't go easy on you just because you're a primate. I swim past Amicus. Go! But, uh, hey! I hear the wolf splashing noisily behind Lee as he tries to catch up. I do fairly well for the first half of our little race, managing to get around the backside of the island without the wolf catching up to me. I notice that this part of the island is covered in dense trees and vegetation with no beach to speak of. At this point, Amicus overtakes me with the big lunging strokes, breathing hard each time he comes up. I realize how hard he's trying, and I wonder if he's actually afraid of losing. It's clear that there's a competitive edge to him, and I guess that makes sense if he's determined to beat Cassius to the throne. As we come around the final bend, I fall behind further, quickly losing stamina as the muscles burn in my arms and legs. Amicus seems to notice and slows down a bit toward the end, allowing me to catch up some before he reaches the same spot we started at. For a moment, we both gasp for breath in the shallows, though Amicus grins. <laughs> ah, I win, huh? I roll my eyes and, and, to like, and wait till I can breathe evenly again. Whatever, you got way more muscle than I do. That isn't really an advantage. Amicus is still breathing heavily. I wonder how much effort he actually put into beating me. Besides, I've got all this fur weighing me down. You don't. You, you know, competitive swimmers actually shave their fur down near the skin. Makes me wonder if 
what a wolf, sh what a shaped wolf would look like. I'm not sure if I would like to see a shaped wolf. <laughs> I've already seen a shaped dog, but a shaped wolf would probably just look bizarre. Guess I just have bad stamina. Actually, you did a lot better than I thought you would. You had me worried in the first few minutes. What do you call that swimming style? I don't know, I just call it freestyle. Emicus moves closer. Hey, Ben! What's up? Man, you man, you missed some of the best parts. We got we got to see Amicus a little uh, naked over here. All right, Amicus moves closer. His breathing finally under control. Okay, cool, cool. All right, I've been practicing voiceover work with this one so it, it's it's been it's been fun for the past uh, two hours could you teach me to swim looks like you've already got that down I mean your style of swimming you beat me didn't you why would you want to learn my style I say that but I think now I think I know what amicus is getting at Uh, put it put it this way. There's not really a whole lot of frontal nudity in this game. I mean, we kind of got a gratuitous shot of him um, mostly naked, but his hands were covering up his junk. And in in the uh, text, it was well known and now established that the wolf is quite hung because it said, and I quote. Dick swinging back and forth. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> he has a very clumsy way of swimming, sort of like he's fighting the water itself. Amicus harumps, <laughs> blowing some water droplets from his nose. It looked effective. I'd just like to try it if you're willing to show me. I smile. All right. For the next hour, I show the wolf how to swim freestyle. At the beginning, it kind of feels like I'm teaching a toddler how to swim. But I'm teaching a seven-foot wolf how to swim. Hello. The first few tries end up with him thrashing around the water like he's about to drown, showering me with lake water until I have to reach out and grab him to make him stop. I decide to start with the arms first, standing in the shallows and showing him how to put one arm ahead of each other in... A sort of rhythm. Again, I have to stand close to the naked wolf, grabbing his big furry arms and showing him how to move them. Once he has that down, he quickly learns how to add his feet into the mix, and pretty soon, he's swimming back and forth, picking up speed to the point where I have no hope of keeping up with him. <sighs> wolf stamina, man. Wolf stamina. Like to see what that stamina is in bed. <laughs> I realized then that Amicus is a very fast learner. Haha, <laughs> this is so much better. Do you know any other styles? Amicus paddles happily around me. Well, I guess back floating, but no, not really. I'm not a professional swimmer. There you go. There you go. Say hello to our boyfriend. <laughs> Amicus stands running, water running down his furry body. Oh, yeah. Want to race again? He grins at me. I laugh. No, I'm exhausted after teaching you all of that. <laughs> oh, don't be such a pup. Or are you afraid of losing again? He winks to lighten his words. I know, I know, right? Just, ooh, hello. <laughs> I think about flicking him on the nose like... A misbehaving dog, but I resist the urge. Oh, come on, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> or better yet, do it to Cassius, his brother. 
no, I'm tired and I'm hungry, and if I stay out any longer, I'm probably going to get a sunburn. Reminding Amicus that there's food on the beach seems to change his mind, and he follows me into the shallows. Oh, that's right. You have no fur. Sometimes I get burned around my nose if I stay out too long. Are you all right? See, he's so considerate, even though he kidnapped us. <laughs> Might be getting Stockholm Syndrome at this point. <laughs> I feel Amicus rub a paw over my shoulders, and I shiver. Well, we'll know by tonight, but I feel alright. As we trudge onto the beach, I see Alex curled up on a blanket, his fur bright and shiny under the sun. Judging by the plates around him, he's already eaten. Amicus chuckles. <laughs> Such a feline. Anyway, you better keep your eyes off me. I want to fur... I want the fur to dry out before I put my undergarments back on, so I'm going to stop covering up for you. Oh. Are we going to see Peen? Am I going to get banned from Twitch? Okay, good. Hurry. Right. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to get banned from Twitch. I don't have I don't have a lot, whole lot going for me right now. <laughs> Automatically, my arms start to wander towards the wolf before snapping back to look straight ahead. C come on, dude. <laughs> But then I start to think, I'm going to be here for a while as far as I know. <laughs> Maybe I should get used to the whole nudity thing now. I mean, come on, this is supposed to be modeled after, like, Rome and Italy. Nudity in Europe is, like, not a huge issue. I found that out. <laughs> I found that out the somewhat the hard way. Um, when I was in Germany... Yeah, when in Rome, do it, yeah. No, when I went uh, to Germany, I was visiting a friend of mine in a small town called Gunzburg in Bavaria, and he took me to uh, what's called the, the Bad, which literally translates to bath. But it was actually a swimming pool. And we got in, and we walked... Uh, how's, uh, we walked in to the bathroom there, because in the way it's set up is like, here's your lockers changing room, uh, the showers, and then you go off into the pool. I walk in there, and there's, like, no dividers, no curtains, or anything like that. It's just all open, and I went, like, oh! And I, and I thought, like, I, I stumbled into something that I shouldn't have, but then I thought, wait a minute, this is fucking Europe. <laughs> they're, they're liberal about this stuff. I, I guess, you know, us Americans were so... <clears throat> I guess we're so, um... prudish... And we were brought up to be that way, that we see public nudity is kind of like a, a, a no-no. Whereas in Germany, th they don't have a problem with it. In fact, in a uh, in place uh, in Munich called uh, English Garten, which means English Garden, there's actually empty spaces in the park where people actually go sunbathing in the nude. And I'm, I'm like, hold oh, on. Really? That they're that open with it here? Might have to revisit at some point. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I found out about uh, liberal uh, nudity in Europe when I went there like ten years ago. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> there we go. When in Rome. <laughs> I mean. It's not that big of a deal, and if this is a normal thing for the wolves, well, why not get used to it? So I look. Oh! Yep. We gotta... We gotta block that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Try not to get banned. <laughs> Because this this uh, also uploads to YouTube as well. <laughs> yeah. Amicus grunts in a surprise when he sees me not bothering to avoid looking his way. W human! His paws snap up covering his crotch again. Okay, I think we can go back to that. Alright, yes. Alright. <laughs> let's, let's hope... Uh, I don't have to swap back and forth here. This this is going to be crazy if I have to do this. Doing it on the fly. 
This is my first time actually seeing him naked, so... Uh, well, out outside of Twitter, but... I smirk. What? I might as well get used to this if it's normal around here, right? Though I gotta say, you're acting like this isn't. Oh, we're gonna have to... <laughs> we're gonna have to, um... Cover up again here. So, uh, did... <laughs> You just surprised me is all, anyway. Emkiss walks stiffly up the beach, past the sleeping Alex as I try to keep up. It's kind of satisfying to see how embarrassed he is considering how much he'd been teasing me about it. And honestly, now that I've seen it, it really isn't that big of a deal at all. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I know. The wolf's cock and balls are just like humans. That, that that was the big big thing because I remember on Twitter that it was kind of like a swap between whether it was um, human or canine and so I, I, you know it, it was a thing but you know hey human human dick good sure whether maybe a little bit more fur on the balls and a darker shade of cock <laughs> But still similar. We reach the sightseer and I see Alex has laid out the food in a neat little line of plates. Though some of the pastries look a bit squashed, everything seems to have survived the emergency dumping that they suffered. Amicus grabs a few large plates of quiches and what looks like fruit pastries. Meanwhile, I grab a folded blanket and the bottle of wine for Amicus and a smaller bottle of the vegetable tasting juice that I had yesterday for myself. We wink our way over to the shade trees before I roll out the blanket and Amicus starts to tie his underwear back on. Finally, he sits down with a huff before reaching out for the wine. Okay, now we can go back to the scene. There we go. You sure you don't want any? He asks before guzzling some of it down. Uh, I mean, maybe a dinner or something, but I'd rather not get buzzed right now. Yo, I just downed like a freaking, what is this? A 40 ounce can, a beer, and I feel nothing. Like I'm, maybe it's that Celtic blood starting to come out now. The Celtic blood means I can drink and not get drunk. <laughs> oh, really? I should drink quite a bit more than this bottle to become inebriated. Well, dude, you're a seven foot tall wolf. <laughs> Guess that explains how you can drink so much of it for every meal. Imagine having that kind of... Whatever. Well, you are a lot bigger. Anyway, this stuff is great. I usually pull the cork out of my own bottle before drinking down the ice cold juice. Oh, yes, that sounds delicious. Amicus pulls a face. Ugh. Fieldy. That stuff tastes awful. Wine is so much better. Amicus immediately goes for the fruit pastries, shoving two in his mouth at the same time. <laughs> Literally same. <laughs> Maybe you just prefer sweet things. And slow down. Don't you take time to enjoy your food? He's a wolf. They wolf it now. Literally. He frowns at me with a, his mouth full. I do enjoy it. That's why I eat it fast. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It, it is that doesn't make sense. You enjoy it, but you eat it fast. No, 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 no. You you eat it slowly. Savor it. Savor it. Someone worked hard to make that shit. I smile and go after one of the quiches instead. We eat in silence for a few minutes. Then I remember what Cato had said earlier. When do you need to be at the thing Cato was talking about? Combat practice. We've got at least an hour yet. And what does that involve? Oh, just striking and grapples. I'm just glad Cass isn't here to join us. I hate sparring with him. Really? He told me last night he can't even compete with you. That's exactly why. He has a condition where his bones are less dense than what is normal, making them easy to break. Osteoporosis? Because of this, I'm more of a training dummy for him than anything. Uh... 
Basically, he just uses it as an excuse to punch me in the stomach. There isn't much I can do to retaliate that won't seriously injure him, so I prefer training with Kato. Hmm. Didn't you tell Cassius that you'd punch him yesterday? <laughs> I did, didn't I? Well, that's why he was so offended, but now he knows not to bother you. Uh, yeah? Spe speaking of which, uh, Ben, d do you agree with this one that Cassius has got to be one of the most catty bitches, like, ever? Like, seriously, I I I've never seen a wolf be so catty before. I've learned to be gentle with him ever since we were pups, but my limits can only be pushed so far. Especially now that I have you. Ah, That's so corny. <laughs> Literally, yes. You said you used to get along with him when you were pups. Yes, but I think that had more to do with him admiring me when we were younger. He used to look up to me, which was preferable to how he is now. What happened? Uh, we grew older. Then our mother died, and he was always very close to her, and he shared a lot in common, including their disease. Amicus pokes around the pastries before picking one up that looks to be filled with a red fruit. Then I suppose we've always been different philosophically, which would be fine if you weren't trying to take the throne from me. So if you were next in line for the throne, how could Cassius just challenge you for it? How is that supposed to work? No, not really. Cato's the one who decides the things this way. Which he can, because he's the acting emperor. Cassius is building a following amongst the wolves for the past several years. Hmm. I thought he was simply trying to solidify his chances of becoming my advisor, but his speeches and writings were so different from my father's. I did realize he was cultivating a certain persona for the emperor's ship eventually, but I never thought Cato would buy into it just because of Cassius's popularity. But he did, and here we are. So, Cassius is cultivating a certain persona for the Empire ship. That's a cult of personality. That's literally a cult of personality. Sounds like Cassius would literally be Donald Trump. Amicus shoes away a worryingly, a worryingly large fly that lands near the plane. How big are the fucking flies on this planet? <laughs> I thought I'd have more time anyway. A lot more time, but father's passing was sudden, so I'm left with what I have now. What happened to him, if you don't mind me asking? To father? His ship crash landed while landing in Ad Astra City about five months ago. It's a rare thing to happen, but it does happen. Sorry. Well, he's with the parents now, so I'll see him again. But he should have so much more but he should have had so much more time left just like mother how old was she 157 wow 157 wow I blink he was 157 yes years yes he looks at me confused how long do your people live uh it varies, but about 250 to 300 years. Oh, he'd outlive my ass. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, I'd be at 90 years old and... <clears throat> wow. Yeah, literally. Same, dude. Same. How long... Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. How long do, you, do your people live? He looks slightly apprehensive. I don't know. 80? 100 if we're lucky? Oh. His ears fall. Oh, he wants to spend the rest of his life with me. Thanks for the follow, Ben. Now, I, now I've got to get, like, 44 more before I get to a, um, affiliate status. I'm, I'm trying to get there, and it's... But it, it's been slow, though. That's so short. Compared to you guys, yeah. Wait, 
How old are you? 20, how old are you? Yo, I'm 31, bro. In my case, it's still frowning. 23. Oh! Literally a three year. Wow. That gives me some pause trying to work out how much a human lifespan. How much that would be in a human lifespan. Wait, so are you an adult or. Amicus seems to recover. Well, adulthood varies among species and cultures, obviously, but legal adulthood is 20, so yes, I'm considered an adult. Oh. So, higher age of consent. Uh, okay, alright, alright, alright. Nothing like Rome in itself. 33, 33 years old, but why? You, you don't look that old, though. I would have pegged you for, like, maybe at least 26, 27. Huh, that's about the same as humans. Yeah, I would have pegged you for, like, your, like, late 20s. But the difference is that you die a lot sooner. That concern to look again. Oh, he's concerned about us. Oh, I feel bad for this wolf. My shrug. Eh, I've grown up with the idea, so it's not all that shocking to me. See it? Now, see that it was there was the reverse with me because when I was like fifteen. And this was like, uh, shoot, when Obama first ran, back in like, oh, shoot, what was it? Kind of feels so long ago. No, 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 no. This was before Obama. This was when um, it was Bush and John Kerry. Yeah. It, no, I was no, I was seventeen when uh, when that happened. Because my birthday was after an election day. It was when John Kerry first... Yes, 2004. When I was like 13, we were... Um, I, we, were uh, we had gone up to the election uh, center in uh, Humphreys County, Tennessee. If you ever get the opportunity to go there, don't. It's, it's boring as hell. Um, uh, we went in, and I'm escorting my mom into the building, and they tried to get me to vote. Here I am, 13 years old, and they literally thought I was like 19 years old. I'm thinking, I don't know if I should be insulted or. <laughs> yeah, for real, they like they were like asking for my ID, and they were trying to give me a ballot, and they're asking what my political party. I'm like, like, whoa, 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 I can't vote. <laughs> I'm I'm only 13, I can't vote. <laughs> No, 2016 election was like my first election, I think. Yeah. No, 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 no. I take that back. 2012 was the first election, and I voted for Obama. And then 2016 rolled around. I voted for Hillary Clinton, and this one rolled around. I voted for Joe Biden. But in the primaries back in 2016 and uh, for 2020, I voted for Bernie Sanders because feel the burn. Amicus seems to be thinking. Well, well, that's an obvious expression right there. Hmm, maybe we can do something about it. I don't like the idea of you being through a fourth of your life when you've only just reached adulthood. I frown. But well, what are you going to do about it? We aren't able to live so long naturally. We take supplements and medication that slows the aging process. Maybe we can consider some of for you. Oh. It's an interesting thought, but I don't like the idea of being a guinea pig for wolvish medication. <laughs> I'd try it. <laughs> uh, maybe, but let's figure out the whole emperor thing first. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. All right. Amicus picks up his claws for a while. Sorry, picks at his claws for a while, and it looks like he just wants to say something. 
but he doesn't and just stays quiet. Finally, just as I'm about to ask him what's wrong, he looks over at the sleeping Alex. I'll be right back. And with that, the wolf suddenly gets up and jogs over to the cat. I can't help but feel the conversation was left unfinished, but then I see Amicus get down on his paws and knees, as if sneaking up on Alex. Ooh. I frown and watch the wolf get closer, his paw reaching out for Alex's earring. Oh, the grapes. I guess the wolf wasn't being very quiet because Alex suddenly rolls over and squeals as the wolf leaps on him. Amicus, no, 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 this is my best one. Don't mess it up. I sigh and get up, a little reluctant to leave the shade as I make my way over to the pair. Alex is rolled up into a little ball, clutching his ear as he tries to hide the grapes. Don't you dare. Do you want to tear my ear off? I'm being gentle. If you would stop trying to fight it, it would make this easier. No! Alexios tries to roll away, then spots me. Rainy, help! <laughs> I sigh and watch for a bit before deciding to save the poor cat. I look for an opening, then pounce on Amicus's back, wrapping my arms around his neck and my legs around his waist, trying to throw him off balance. Oh ho ho, not so fragile now, are we? Amicus swings me back and forth as if trying to throw me off, but not really putting any effort into it. Well, I am human. Meanwhile, Alex scrambles from out under the wolf before turning to me and giving him a shove. <clears throat> Amicus starts to topple backwards, and for a moment, I'm thinking I'm about to get crushed between this 300-pound wolf and sand. But Amicus turns as we fall, and we end up laying sideways on the beach. <clears throat> gotta, gotta do the sound effects. Alex stands to the side, quickly dusting himself off before adjusting his earring, frowning. You know, I might as well just stop wearing this thing. There's no point if half of it is plucked by the day's end. Amicus just lays there and s laughs. <laughs> His laugh is infectious, so I laugh too. <laughs> They're too good, Alex. Maybe you should start wearing inedible berries instead. He huffs as he looks down at his nose at us. It's a cultural staple of my people, and honestly, what you're doing is rather disrespectful, especially as a prospective emperor. Amicus waves his paw dismissively, laying flat on his back next to me, his arms flopping over my head. Fie, you're a friend. Obviously, I wouldn't do it to an actual ambassador. I am an actual ambassador, Amicus. Yeah, but a friend ambassador. <sighs> anyway, thank you, Rainy. You should obey your master, yes, but it's also important to keep your master in check when he oversteps his bounds. Ooh, we get to have a little control. Hey, don't encourage insubordination, Alex. And because his big paw resting above my head comes down to ruffle my hair. I realize for the first time since I was abducted that I am at ease. Happy even. What did I say? Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> Then Alex looks at the sky. Amicus, what time is it? Amicus suddenly sips up with a grunt, almost looking towards the sun. I don't know. Is it close to the 11th hour? I was asleep, so I'm not sure. I'd ask calm, but we're outside his boundaries. Amicus sits for a moment and sighs. <sighs> well, I suppose we should be off, just in case. We gather up the food and blankets... Don't you guys have portable clocks or something? You mean a watch? Amicus shrugs. We do, but usually I can just ask calm. The wolf taps his ear. But like Alex said, his signal doesn't reach the island. Amicus is starting to look a little bit nervous, so we pick up the pace and pack ourselves into the sights here. A bit more crowded with Amicus inside. We're halfway to the shore, and Amicus asks the time, then groans. Damn it. Half past the eleventh hour. Well, Kato's not going to be too happy now, is he? <laughs> I don't think so. Alright. Though Alex tells me that this is a really big... Okay, alright. We need, we need to go backwards. I'm, I'm missing something here. 
the amphitheater is small compared to the masses ones I've seen in Rome. It might be only able to fit a hundred people at most. The lags told me that this is the the really big one is in the city center. He sits next to me on the bottom bench with the stairs between us and we watch as Amicus stands alone in the center of the pit. He has his paw on his hips, looking around, waiting. And he's still in his undergarments. Well, I don't think he's here. Clearly. Do you want to be my Spartan partner for the day, Alex? No! Alex crunches up, one paw going to cover his earring as Amicus just laughs. <laughs> I look around, not seeing the old wolf anywhere. Are you going to get in trouble, Amicus? Amicus shrugs, leaning one way, then the other in a sort of stretch. Probably, but Kyo is always upset. He'll probably just make me train extra, an extra hour tomorrow or something. Besides, I got most of my exercise in at the lake. Amicus suddenly does a handstand, his feet poking straight up in the air. I'm amazed that he's able to keep perfectly balanced. I mean, I mean, come on, he's athletic. Alex quickly looks away as the hanging cloth of the wolf's undergarment falls upwards, even if everything is still covered. I guess cats uh, value uh, modesty quite a bit. Well, mostly. I can see the lighter colored fur that covers his front, also covering his inner thighs. <laughs> Man, they made this... They made this really really sexual and I'm like and I'm liking it then Amicus falls backwards keeping his paws on the ground while his feet land with a thump the wolf's back arched making a bridge it's kind of impressive seeing such a thick muscular body be so limber I mean I've seen some videos <laughs> I'm surprised how they're how limber some of them are too That's what I know is Amicus looking directly at me from his upside down position. Watching me, watching him. Watching me, watching him, watching you, watching me, watching him, watching you. <laughs> I quickly look away blushing, realizing the wolf is just showing off. Amicus pushes off his paws, smoothly standing straight up. Uh, well, I suppose we can go back to the palace since I need a partner to do the rest of my training. Unless... He glances at me. Rainy, would you like to assist me? I freeze up for a moment, still feeling a bit awkward at being caught staring at his body. I mean, it is a nice body. Who wouldn't want to be staring at that body? You know, I could stare at that all day. Be three hours would just be like, ah. <sighs> I know I can say no, but Alex is here, and I don't want to come off as a belligerent pet in front of him. We're still sort of pretending, after all, even though Alex probably thinks something is off about me. Don't worry. I'm not going to hurt you. It would probably be the other way around. <laughs> I mean, we did hit him with a, with a metal pole. All right. I get up and stand awkwardly in front of the half-naked wolf, glad that I'm at least in my robes now. Do your people have combat sports? Yeah. Actually, there's a, there were a few where your people uplifted. Wrestling and something else where they're basically just beating each other up. I can't remember the name of it. Name of it. Uh, he, Amicus smiles. That sounds familiar enough. It's called Pugnu, and it mostly involves punching, kicking, and grappling. The only rules are no claws, no teeth, no going for the eyes. Or groin. Yeah, sounds like boxing. Amicus smirks at me. And while sparring, we avoid striking above the neck, so go ahead and throw some punches at me. Amicus grins and hunches down, his paws out. I look over at Alex, who watches us, a bit of a disapproving look on his face. Amicus notices. Don't mind, Alex. His people are too soft for this sport. Ooh, that was a pot shot. Um, excuse me, but we invented the grapples you use. We just grew out of it. Emika seems to ignore the cat circling me. Come on, don't hold back. Mostly I just want to train my reflexes. Try to shake off my tibbiness and move forward, throwing an awkward punch at Amicus's chest. 
He easily slaps it away. I hope you can do better than that, Rainy. I blush and put a little more effort into a quick punch into the wolf's side, which he dodges with a jump to the right. I follow him and jab at his stomach, which he blocks with an elbow. Yeah, he's a good fighter. Oh, come on, you can hit harder than that. We go on for a little longer until I finally stuff. Huffing. Emkis comes up from his crouch. What's wrong? Tired already? I shake my head. Honestly, I don't like throwing punches at you. It feels kind of wrong. Alex perks up. See? Rainy understands. Amicus rolls his eyes. Pfft, you're both so soft. There's nothing wrong with a bit of sanctioned combat. In fact, I say it creates more a civilized... <coughs> I take the opportunity to jab at Amicus in the side, making the wolf grunt. Get him while the guard is down. That's how you do it. And because it turns on me with widened eyes. Uh, oops. And because it frowns while Alex laughs. <laughs> I'll show you an oops. And because it smirks as he ducks in, grabbing my arms and easily pinning them behind my back. Getting kinky. Hey! He playfully growls into my ear. Ooh. Now it's your turn to train. Try and get out of this. He leans heavy against me, using his weight to his advantage. It's clear I have no chance of getting out of the hole, but I try anyway, struggling and complaining. Oh, please, no. Amicus! I jump and so does Amicus, the wolf immediately letting me go. The sudden lack of support almost causes me to face plant before Amicus catches me and sets me back on my feet. I turn around and see Kato. Despite the volume and fury in his voice just moments earlier, he appears almost calm. This this wolf is an enigma. Amicus and I stand there for a moment, breathing heavily, then Amicus bows. Good morning, Cato. I quickly follow suit, bowing low. There's a moment of silence as Cato regards us both. Afternoon, you mean. You're late. My apologies, I lost track of time at the lake. Your pet did not remind you? Is that not one of his duties? Kato's gaze snaps in my direction, I almost jump. I don't know what to do, so I go back to bowing, wondering if I should apologize. I have not taught him our hours yet, Kato, it's my fault. Kato watches us for a moment longer then begins unfastening his robe. Luckily, my appointment with the Praetor has been cancelled, so despite your tardiness, we may train. Uh, God damn, all the wolves are hot on this planet. Y y you know that whole trope of... Inside you, there are two wolves? That might be me later with these two. Move, pet. I stand there like an idiot for a moment before realizing he's talking to me. I hurry over to sit down next to Alex, and I can tell by the expression on his face that he's also a bit worried. I see you've already warmed up. Kato glances over at me before turning back to Amicus, getting into a crouch. Amicus stands awkwardly for a moment before doing the same. Yes, did you need to... I did mine while waiting for you over half an hour, Amicus. Ah. The two big wolves start circling each other. I want to ask Alex if this is normal, but something tells me I shouldn't speak out of turn in the presence of Cato. Your brother had a very successful speech in the city today. Over 500,000 attended. Damn, that's a lot of fucking people. That sounds like a Trump rally. Hmm? Amicus seems thrown off by what Kato said, but then Kato first snaps out and smacks Amicus around the nose. Ooh! Ah! The wolf stumbles back, blinking and snorting as he holds his face. <laughs> I wince. Didn't Amicus just tell me that he didn't go for the face during training? I look at Alex questioningly because the cat is now looking firmly at the ground between his feet, his ears down. 
That's double his last speech, Amicus, and it rivals your father's early days as emperor. Amicus has recovered to the point that he got back got his paws back up and his teeth bared. He doesn't respond and starts circling Kato again. This time he attacks first, throwing an elbow to Kato's face. Kato ducks it, moves to the side, smacking a fist into Amicus's back, right over the kidney. Ugh. Ah! Amicus lets out a pain grunt, bending sideways and stumbling before forcing himself into back into position, his teeth showing now. And while you were being a pup at the lake, Cassius was touring the countryside. And even that drew thousands. Cato suddenly throws a sudden kick at Amicus's thigh, and I look away, but I still hear the painful thwack of furry flesh on furry flesh. This isn't training. This is punishment. Stealing a ship, flying across the galaxy will only get you so far, Amicus. You win the people over, not me. <coughs> Amicus bull rushes the old man, grabbing one of Kato's legs by the thigh, lifting it off the ground while he starts throwing vicious punches into the older wolf's face. Kato seems to become dazed, stumbling on, on, on his one foot, raising a paw to protect himself. I silently root for Amicus, waiting to see him put the old man in his, on his ass. I mean, yeah. But then Cato's paw comes around in a vicious slap that turns Amicus's head to the right. He drops Cato's leg, and that's when the old wolf wraps his arms around Amicus's waist, setting his shoulders into the other's wolf's stomach before actually lifting him off the ground. Damn. I don't know how exactly much Amicus weighs, but it's probably around the same as Kato himself, but somehow the old wolf is able to carry Amicus across the pit in a rush. Alex and I dive out of the way as Kato crushes Amicus into the stairs with a thudding crunch. <coughs> I look back and see Amicus folded around Kato's shoulder, making a sound like a deflating tire as his eyes bulge out. Jesus Christ, man. After a moment, Kato finally pulls back. Amicus curls up and rolls down the few steps to the pit of the amphitheater before making a horrible groaning sound. Kato, meanwhile, straightens out his undergarments before turning to pick up his robes again. Good spar, Amicus. I hope you learn something from it. I announce to the public that the trials will begin at the end of this month. Oh shit. Remember that your pet will be involved, so be sure that he's prepared. Kato ties on his robes as he walks away, then suddenly turns as if he's forgetting something, addressing the still wheezing amicus. Oh, and your sister and her guest arrived today. She requested to see you in the Great Hall as soon as our session ended. And with that, Kato stalks off, his robes billowing in the wind. I rush to Amicus' side. Amicus, are you okay? I know the wolves are tougher than humans, but if I had been slammed into the stairs like that, there'd be a good chance I'd never get back up. I sit a hand on Amicus' back as he hugs at his middle and presses his face against the stone floor. He keeps making a strained grunting sound, and I can see that a strand of drool connecting from his lips is to the ground. Alex stands next to us, nervously fidgeting with his robe. Amicus. Amicus surprises me by roughly pushing my hand away. I just uh, lost my wind. Give me a moment. Amicus turns away from me, then rolls onto his back, his paw above his head. His breathing's still irregular, but at least he is breathing now. He clears his... Alex clears his throat. <clears> throat. Amicus, do you need medical attention? Amicus takes a deep breath and slowly lets it out. <sighs> no, Alex. All right, then I should probably take my leave. I don't know when Cassius would, will return. Alex, looking extremely uncomfortable, bows to the both of us. Amicus, Rainy, thank you for the outing. It's very relaxing. 
and he quickly makes his exit down the stone path, disappearing through the trees. I stand awkwardly off to the side, waiting for Amicus to recover. Some ambassador friend he is. He opens one eye, looking at me. You know you can head back to the palace as well. I just want to make sure you're okay. I'm fine. I mean, he hits you really hard. I'm a little worried. Don't be. Go back to my room. Amicus's usually cheerful mood has completely dissipated. Well, if I'm pretending to be your pet, I guess I'll just pretend to be worried, all right? Amicus just grunts and finally gets to his feet, wincing as he does. He straightens out his undergarments with head twisted off to the side before walking towards the same path Alex had taken. I quickly catch up, following a few steps behind the wolf. Amicus is hunched over, walking with a light limp. I feel a wave of anger for Kato. He'd been nice to me yesterday, but now that I realize that this isn't typical for him. I understood the lesson he was teaching Amicus in the amphitheater, but I don't understand why it had to involve violence. Is this how wolves normally treat each other? Fake civility would burst a savage aggression? I mean, it is in The Sims. Was that... Was what Kato did normal? What do you mean? I mean, does he usually just beat you like that? <sighs> no, not usually. It seemed a bit much. Can we not speak of this? I'm not in the mood. Okay. I see him because his ears fall flat for a bit before coming back up. We walk the rest of the way to the palace in silence. I'm sure to stay a few steps behind Amicus, wanting to give him space. I get the feeling that he's suddenly, that he's definitely upset about what happened. He's mostly just embarrassed that I saw it. We finally reach the main entrance to the palace, and just as we turn into the great hall, Amicus. Oh wait, wait, wait! Let me try that again. Amicus. I, I suck at female voices. A high sing-song voice echoes through the marble walls and a slight wolvish figure appear, quickly approaches us. Oh. A wolf, who I can only imagine is Virginia, walks up to Amicus. She places both paws on her shoulders and leans in, pressing the side of her face to his. Hi, Virginia. Virginia pulls back, rolling her eyes. Amicus, I took your place on a trip around the moon for a full week, and your only response is hi? Sorry, I'm... I'm not feeling all that well. Oh. Was Keto too rough with you during training? Shall I have a word with him? No, I'm just sore. Mm, you can use a shower too. You smell dreadful. I, we were swimming in the lake. Uh, n never mind. I should be getting back to my room. Enough with the dour mood, Amicus. Not until we introduce our guests to each other. Virginia looks right at me over Amicus's shoulder. Amicus sighs, then reaches out his paw to me. I walk over to him, letting the wolf place his paw on my shoulder. This is Rainy. He's an abandoned child. Oh, fascinating. I thought Cass was pulling my tail in his letters. Virginia stretches out a paw. I stand there awkwardly. Angelina Jolie, yes. I, that would be really good. I stand there awkwardly, unsure of what to do, so I reach out and take her paw into my hand. Then after another pause, I lean down and brush my lips on her fur like I'd seen people do in movies. Huh, interesting. It seems that they have some sort of etiquette. I step back, keeping my head down. A bit, yes. Now where's the Chemian? Manners, Amicus. He's examining the murals. She turns to her right, raising her voice a bit. Nefuru! 
Could you come over and meet my brother, please? There's a moment of silence, then soft footsteps. Hello! Yes! We've got a jackal. <laughs> Seriously, this is what I imagine Ra would look like. The canine appears around the corner, his fur much darker than the wolves, almost pitch black. He's covered in gold highlights, and immediately I'm struck by how he looks. Damn, he looking fine. <laughs> Not just because his presence is impressive. It definitely is, but mostly because he reminds me of something on Earth. Anubis. Not just something, but an entire thing, a culture. I stare real and I realize that he's not looking at Amicus, but at me. I quickly look down again, not in one to draw attention to myself. Neferu, this is my brother Amicus. Neferu bows his head slightly in Amicus's direction. Hello. Thank you for letting me take up residence in your palace. It is indeed beautiful. It's hard to describe, but I immediately know that Nifuru is speaking in a different language than the wolves. It has a different feel in my brain, like a different dialect. Certainly. You'll have to excuse my appearance. I was just out of combat training. Oh, I see. It must have been a rough session by the looks of it. Nifuru gives Amicus a cool smile, and Amicus can only manage a grunt in response, self-consciously running a paw over his head for her. That's when Nifuru turns his cool blue gaze to on me. And who might you be? I open my mouth to answer, then catch myself, quickly looking back down. This is Rainy, my pet. He's an abandoned child. Amicus says it quickly putting a paw on my shoulder again while gently pulling me in the direction of his room. It was wonderful meeting you, but now I must be off to my shower. Nifura offers his paw to me. I pause again, but then Amicus just stands at, stares at Nefuru, Neferu, and I take it and do the same as I did with the same with Virginia. Blech. How to English tape. Nefuru lets out a soft chuckle as I let go of his paw. What a fascinating creature. Do you speak? I made sure to give a long pause. Then. Little. I see. The Feyru keeps his eyes fixed on me. And I wonder why the hell he's taking such an interest. Uh, he wants to bury his knot in you, man. <laughs> Amicus draws me closer to his side with a paw before starting to walk in the direction of all, all. If you'll excuse us, I need my pet's assistance in the showers. Pleasure meeting you. Virginia, who had been silent throughout, smiles. Don't worry, Neferu. We just caught my brother in a bad mood. Usually he's much more friendly. I can hear you, Virginia. I'm still here. So are you, yet you said you have to be. Sorry, so you are, yet you said you had to be off. We shall speak more in the depth of the evening, perhaps when you've stopped sulking. Amicus grunts noncommittally and pulls me along towards his bedroom. We arrive at Amicus's room, and there's a cart of flatbread, vegetables, and a bowl of sauce sitting outside the door. Sounds tasty. I come to realize that there are two main meals in the day. Breakfast and dinner, with a sort of midday snack in between. Yo, same here. Amicus grabs the cart and shoves it into the room towards the sofa, almost rattling the contents to the floor. Then without a word, he heads straight to the shower, leaving me to sit on the couch while I frown at the door. Man, he seems to be really sad. At first, I think about calling him out on his bad mood when he comes back out. Maybe I 
go on about how I didn't ask to be here and him being an ass only makes it worse. But then I start to realize that maybe I wouldn't be so happy myself if I got my ass kicked in front of my friends. I spent the next 15 minutes or so spreading orange colored sauce on the flatbread before sprinkling the vegetables on top and rolling it into a wrap. It's good. The sauce is on one of the first spicy things I've experienced on this moon. Then Amicus comes back out looking particularly fluffy. I ask him if he wants to get brushed, but he just falls back into his bed with a groan. You alright? Never better. After a few chopped peppers fall out of my wrap and onto the sofa, I quickly pick them back up and set them on the cart. This is actually really good. I was starting to worry you guys didn't have food with actual flavor in here. You know, the country where you guys uplifted? Italy? It's known for its food. Actually, before you uh, took me, I had this trip planned to go to Naples, which is only a few hours outside of Rome, just to try the pizza. Do you have pizza here? Amicus gazes at me with a frown. I wonder if he understood a single thing I said. No. Uh, well, it's sort of like this if I... If I'd keep it flat and we baked it. Anyway, you want some? Jeremy Irons is ki Yeah, absolutely. I hold my wrap up with a smile. Amicus glares. I just had my gut squashed flatter than f the flatbread, and you're assuming I still have an appetite? I quickly lower it. Yeah, sorry. Amicus goes on staring at the ceiling while I nibble on the food. Though I'm not really all that hungry anymore. Amicus sighs deeply, covering his face with his paws. <sighs> I'm sorry. I've just been thinking a lot is all. About? He's, he's kind of hard to place. I, I could imagine Cassius being voiced by someone like Andy Dick. And, and as much as a dick he is, I can't quite get the whole notion out of my head that Cassius would sound like a catty bitch. And unfortunately, Andy Dick sounds like a catty bitch. But I'm trying to think who would be a good voice for Amicus? Who would be a good voice for Amicus? Maybe Idris Elba. Amicus just shakes his head, continuing to rub his brow. Well, how sore I am for one. I look over at the wolf and then remember what he said last night about the massage. Yeah, yeah, see, see? I think about it for a moment. Amicus has been trying to make me comfortable as possible throughout the few days I've been here. Minus the sofa. I kind of feel like I owe it to him. You want a massage? I see Amicus freeze up, his face still covered with his paws until he finally lowers them. And his expression, almost comical. What? I feel myself turning red. I asked if you wanted a massage. I thought you didn't want to. Well, I never really gave you an answer, did I? Amicus narrows his eyes. I don't want to force you into something you don't want to do. Well, I'm offering, but if you don't want it... I start to sit back down. Amicus' ears fall flat. No, no, please do. <laughs> that was like a turn of a dime on them, yay. <laughs> Try to hide my smile as I get back up and approach the bed. Amicus sort of watches me, half sitting up. Once I get to the edge of the bed, I pause. Um, so, what do we do? Oh, uh, Amicus rolls over onto his front. Well, honestly, I don't know how it's supposed to be done, but we could start with some light rubbing. Are we going to... Scratch that, I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> 
cautiously get up onto the bed, get onto the bed on my knees, trying not to get tangled up in my robe as I scoot closer. Dude, just take off your robe. Tentatively, I reach out and touch the wolf's back. And my and heals greatly, his back rising against my fingers. Then slowly I start to massage, starting on his thick neck before slowly rubbing my way down. I don't know the first thing about massaging, so I just do what feels natural and Amicus seems to like it. When I reach his mid-back, he grunts, a little more gentle there, got scraped on the stairs. I pause, then tease through the fur a bit and find a small, fresh scab right on Amicus's spine. I put the fur back down before moving past it, working my thumbs into the muscles on either side of the wolf's spine. Kato's an asshole. <laughs> Just matter matter of fact, kind of like, kind of like from uh, that movie Weird Science. Chet's an asshole. Now guess lets out a choke cough of surprise. <coughs> Brainy, don't say that. He's acting emperor. Well, he is. If you must say it, then at least keep your voice down. I swear. Cassius sometimes has his ears pressed against my door. Oh. Amicus moans it as I start his neck again and press harder than I had last time, really sinking into the muscle. The wolf's body melts into the bed, and I grin with satisfaction as I keep the pressure down on the rest of his back. It would be easier if I were straddling him. But I don't know how I'd feel about doing that just yet. Um, yo, boner. Uh, seriously, that's what would happen. Boner. Amicus is quiet for a few minutes while I work. Then he sighs. He, he was right, though. I still act like a pup. Whoop. And I need to be more serious. I frown. What do you mean? Kato had every right to beat me. I haven't been acting very much like an emperor lately. I shake my head. First of all, no one should be beaten. Second, Cassius acts like a child or pup. I mean, you might act like a little immature, but he's a brat. You're fine if he's the only one you're competing with. Besides, you're a lot of fun to be around. If I were a wolf, I think it'd be pretty cool to have an emperor as nice and as fun as you are. Aww, that's sweet. Oh, really? Then I suppose things are different here. I forgot myself at the lake today, and when Kato caught me teasing you... Amicus presses his face into the pillow, cringing. <sighs> Can you not have fun as the prospective emperor? Not really. Cassius hasn't been out to the lake for years. Sometimes I think something is wrong with me, that I still enjoy such things. There's nothing wrong with enjoying the simple things. Like, you know, for me, just getting, like, some iced coffee at the freaking coffee shop, you know, it's the little things that, that are worth it. You know, a little self-care, you know? I try to decide whether or not my opinion is worth anything on this alien moon. Well, I don't think so. People our age on Earth do way dumber stuff to have fun, and it's considered normal. Even when you get older, you're expected to do things you enjoy. Otherwise, what's the point of life? We're only here for a moment before we die, and that's it. I can't help but feel my, my argument is a bit amateurish, but it's true, though. Amicus doesn't seem convinced, either. Well, first of all, point of my life is to lead my people to a better future. Secondly, we become one with the parents when we die. I frown. Become one? What, do they absorb your soul or something? I stifle my chuckle when I see Amicus is still very serious. No, well, I don't know. But our consciousness joins theirs and we go on to spread throughout the universe together. Huh. Is there proof of this? Do they say what happened? Did they say that's what happens? Of course. I still think of questioning him further, but right now, 
I'm not really in the mood to debate anything religious with this wolf. Amen to that. His mind seems to be on the having fun issue anyway. Well, I will say that Roman emperors on Earth had a lot of fun. <laughs> there was an emperor named... Uh, I'm probably going to butcher this one. Ella... Ella Gobulus. Ooh. <laughs> that didn't really give a shit about what people thought of him. Yeah, all the fun and the sex he even wanted. Oh? I make his sounds amused. Then I once remember that no one really liked uh, Elagabalus, and he was killed along with his male lover. And then his beheaded body was dragged through the streets of Rome. Ah, oh, that nice visual there. Just be, be like, oh, good night, honey. Uh, good night. Just, ugh, that's a that's visceral. Well, I think a good, I think a balance is a good thing to have in your life. Be serious when you need to be, but. Have fun when you can. Amicus just grunts again, so I go on rubbing for a little while longer. Oh, so while I was at my studies, I had some time in the library to myself. And I found this primate species in the general vicinity of your star. They were a part of a failed uplift and looked generally similar to you. A lot hairier. But I don't think anyone will notice. The name they have for themselves isn't pronounceable by us, but we name them Semanians. So if anyone asks what you are, tell them that. Oh, okay. You mean Simians? I repeat the word in my head trying to memorize it. Also, I would recommend avoiding that Chemian. I don't like the looks of him. Uh, it's because uh, there's uh, some competition. We know. Why not? I don't know, but his demeanor was rather rude. I heard there are an arrogant people, but to see it in person. I almost laugh at the hypocrisy of the statement. <laughs> I'd point it out if Amicus wasn't being so grumpy right now. <laughs> and the way he looked at you didn't sit well with me. Ooh, he's jealous. Just be sure to watch out for him. Didn't really see much of a difference between Nifuru and the wolves aside from appearance, but Amicus seemed genuinely concerned. Alright. Amicus, Amicus grunts in response and I go on rubbing a little while longer. Amicus then rolls over. I pause. Um. Amicus suddenly opens his eyes as if realizing what he's doing. Oh, uh. Do I do your front too? Well, uh, often I, after I get my massage, my drone uh, rubs me. It helps me fall asleep for my afternoon naps. What do you mean by rubs you, sir? If, cause if it's the one I'm thinking of, yes. Rubs you where? <laughs> oh, yep, yeah, I called it. <laughs> totally called it. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's tame. Yeah, we can we, we can rub his belly. I've been wanting to rub his belly ever since I saw him in this game. My, my belly. <laughs> Don't laugh. You're the one who wanted to know. I hesitate and almost automatically my hand reaches out and starts to rub. Amicus is tense at first, but then starts to relax. The blush in his ears receding. You're such a canine. I am a canine. Oh. I like this. I like this view. This is a good view. Like. I don't know about you, but if I if I saw this in my bed, I just curl up right by it, cuddle up with him, feel up that chest, and then I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I 
kind of kind of went off into a tangent there. Well, hello. Uh, the fur, fluffy and disheveled from the shower, smoothed down against the wolf's thick stomach, his belly rising and falling against my hand. In his relaxed state, his stomach is soft under the fur. Press down a bit more firmly to really rub at it. He grunts and winces a bit. Too hard? Just sore. Keep going. It feels good. I continue to rub. His eyes close and his muzzle parts slightly. Uh, so, the trials start soon. At the end of the month, I guess. Yes. And I'm involved in it somehow? Mm hmm. Want to talk about it later? Mm hmm. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm getting a bit nervous. But Amicus doesn't seem to be worried. That puts me at ease. At least a little bit. That's when I know it's a particular. Oh, hello! <laughs> Hi! That's when I notice the particular bulge in Amicus's undergarments. The one I noticed when I brushed him yesterday. I'm not surprised this time, though. If brushing had done it to him, rubbing definitely would too. I'm, I mean, same. So I ignore it. So does Amicus. Or maybe he's just asleep. Then I realize then just how much I've accepted my life here. Rubbing the prospective emperor's belly even though I'm making him hard. <laughs> Man, this. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get through this alive. <laughs> but I also realize that I don't really mind it. It's only been a few days, but there's something about this wolf. I don't know. Just like him. Amicus starts to snore, so I slowly stop rubbing, watching his chest rise and fall with his steady breaths. I think about going back over to the sofa, but instead I just roll over to Amicus's left, curling up on my side of the soft pillows. With the relaxing sounds of Amicus's gentle snores behind me, I drift off into a light sleep. Alright, I think this is a good place to end it for the, for the week. I'm glad you came along, Ben. It was getting a little lonely, but you know I'm glad that you uh, you came along and watched with me a little bit. So I'm trying to think uh, what I'm going to be doing next week. What am I going to be doing next week? Okay, Wednesday night I'm doing um, a sleep study. You know, it's time. For me to get on a CPAP and everything like that. Friday, I have pre-op for gallbladder surgery. So that's going to be fun. But Friday, I'm going to be doing Crash Bandicoot. Then Saturday, I'm going to do Final Fantasy 13 again. And then this again on a Sunday. And I think for 4th of July, I might go ahead and buy Kingdom Hearts and start playing Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. So, Friday, Crash Bandicoot 4. Saturday, Final Fantasy 13. Sunday, Ad Astra. And then Kingdom Hearts 4 on Monday. And then Tuesday, I go in for surgery. So, I hope you've had a good time. I know I did. So until then, we meet again. Have a good night. And have a good, and have a great rest of your week. Love you guys. Bye.